low prices, love the savings. Pepsi, born in the Carolinas, raised in Greenville. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. The South Carolina Department of Agriculture, by certified SC Grown. Bon Secours St. Francis, the official health care provider of Furman Athletics. And by the South Carolina Education Lottery. Furman Football, an exclusive presentation of the Furman IMG Sports Network. Now, let's go live to the stadium. Here's the voice of the Paladins, Dan Scott. Well, once again, we bid you welcome to our homecoming 2017 broadcast of Furman University football. Furman and Mercer about to do battle here at Paladin Stadium on a gorgeous day for football here in the now latter stages of the month of October. This is the first of the four remaining regular season games for the Paladins and save for the Wofford game at the beginning season will be wading through the meat of the Southern Conference schedule beginning with this game moving forward to the end of the season. Along with David Cobb, Jeremy Arnett, our spotter upstairs, Marcus McMorris on the Mass General Store sidelines. I'm Dan Scott. Good to have you with us as we are just a few moments away from getting this one underway. It's always a, a special day when homecoming arrives, and then you add the subplot of Clay Hendricks and Bobby Lamb opposing one another after being on the same sidelines for over 400 games from high school to college player to college coaches. David Cobb, there's some added intrigue into this matchup today. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing is in the daily world of following sports and following college athletics, there's so much negativity and there's so much angst and, and just so much pressure put on college kids to perform. It's fun to come to an afternoon in a beautiful setting like Paladin Stadium on this wonderful campus and to have a game that's between friends and it's competition at its finest. And, you know, there's an actual umph here, a little bit of excitement in the air because of homecoming. Hopefully we're going to have a decent crowd here today and, uh, and we can give a, a performance that will keep people here four quarters. Well, because it's homecoming, there have been uh, a number of folks, well, for lack of a better term, coming home uh, for this one. We've seen a, a lot of talk on the Internet this week from people who are coming back. Some Furman luminaries are here. Frankie DeBusk, who was the quarterback on the 88 National Championship team, is in attendance today. And we are hoping that the uh, Furman football team can continue to play well and reward those who have made their way out to Paladin Stadium this week. David, a team that's won four in a row, and for the first time in school history has scored 40 or more points in four consecutive games, which is a stat that kind of surprised me a bit in the long history of Furman football. You'd think that would have happened before, but not the case. Yeah, and as we look down on the field, you know, to bring up the point, you see three of the Furman legends on offense. You've got Frankie DeBus, Gene Reeder, who was Furman, probably the best center Furman had in the uh, early 80s before Steve Duggan. Gene was a, a great center for Furman. And then Joe Olive, who was part of the offensive line teams that beat NC State in 84 and 85. So you can see a lot of talent on the offensive side of the football in the history of Furman University. And you're right, I was a little taken back by that as well. I thought maybe we would have a, a game somewhere in the 80s or early 90s where we had done that, but it's a testament to what these guys have done on the coaching staff of putting schemes in and putting players in position to make plays, and then ultimately it's a situation where the kids have got to go out and make the plays, and we've done that for the most part during the first seven games this year. As we bring Marcus McMorris into the fray from downstairs, we talked about this at the very beginning of the Southern Fry Cotton Tailgate Show, Marcus, but I think it bears repeating uh, like David, you're a former player, and there are some distractions during this week that you have to deal with. Definitely. You got a lot of your classmates, teammates, uh, people from the years that you remember going back and your involvement and in all these different things going on campus. And uh, you could easily get caught up in it. But just looking at our guys on the field, they seem to be focused and ready for this game. Well, we hope that's the case, Sir Paladin atop his horse, Fury, leading Furman out onto the field. Paladin's coming out of the tunnel from the 
left, wearing the purple jerseys, white helmets, white pants. Mercer, all white today with the orange numerals and lettering and a little black trim in there as well. The Mercer captains for this one, LaMarcus Bailey, Lee Bennett, Isaiah Bueller, and Thomas Marchman. And for the Paladins, P.J. Blazjowski, Matthew Schmidt, Jalen Reed, Dylan Woodruff, who of course has been inactive, lost for the season in week one. It's still very much a part of this program. And now Mercer making its way out of the tunnel. Down off to our left as well on the opposite side. In just a moment, we'll have the coin toss and we'll be ready to play football here today at Paladin Stadium. David, a matchup of two teams that have gotten really good at taking the ball away from the opposition. Furman has been running the ball with reckless abandon over the last few weeks. Mercer averaging 30 points a game with a redshirt freshman quarterback. This has all the earmarks of a heck of a matchup here today. And a lot of similarities, including both teams that probably should have beat Wofford, but didn't. And so uh, I know this is an important game, not only for the, the storylines, but also in the Southern Conference race, because you know if you can get there and have a chance in November to win the conference, or if you can finish with maybe three losses, uh, three, four losses, you're gonna get a playoff bid. So not a lot of reasons to play well today. All right, captains are meeting at midfield. Let's go down to Marcus. Sportsmanship, all right? Mercer, you talk to Mercer. Furman, you talk to Furman. Let us call the football game, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, Mercer, you're the busy team. Here you go. We're going to flip the coin. You go ahead and call it for me. There's tails, there's heads. The SOCON is heads, that's tails. Go ahead and call it. Tails. Tails is call. Tails, tails is, is call. call. It is heads. It's head. Furman. Furman. You have won the toss. You have defer. Furman. Won the toss. And we'll, we'll defer. defer. So the Powell and offense will have to wait as Furman wins the toss, and they will put the Mercer offense on the field first. Mercer will be receiving going from left to right, the field house end toward the scoreboard end. David, as you calculate things here, keys for a Furman victory today. I think it's going to be very important for us to win the turnover battle and I also think, as we mentioned in the pregame show, we've got to win those four-point plays. We've got to be able to score touchdowns and, and not kick field goals. And likewise, when Mercer's in scoring range, we've got to force them for the field goal attempt. And, and I think also, too, is any time you play Bobby's team, Bobby's going to have a couple of, bag, a couple of tricks in the bag and, and, and he'll take some chances. And if they do that this afternoon, we've got to be able to win those plays, maybe create a turnover off of something, but certainly not give up anything cheap. And then we just got to play hard. I think we've proven over the first seven games that when we play hard and we execute uh, and do the things that we can do well, then we're a pretty successful football team. And conversely, when we don't do those things, uh, we tend to struggle. Marcus always liked to get a feel on what the sidelines are like right before kickoff. Yeah, I've, I've spoken to a few people, and some people actually volunteered information that they, they seem to be a little more hyped today. Uh, and this may be an advantage of the homecoming atmosphere. You know, you, we spoke about how it can be a distraction, but this may be something that works to our advantage, just starting fast with uh, so much hype built around the game. John Croft Hollingsworth getting the ball teed up, back deep to receive. Chandler Curtis and Alex Lakes for Mercer. And we are ready for some football here today at Paladin Stadium. I'd like to welcome those of you listening on any one of our many platforms and also those of you who are tuned in via booth cam today getting a look at what goes on behind the scenes. Platform diving. We are ready to get this bad boy underway here at Paladin Stadium. Hollingsworth moves on the ball, gets into a line drive kick and belts this one all the way back through the back of the end zone 
Landed nine yards deep and skipped on through, and Mercer will have it first and 10 at its own 25 to begin play. Redshirt freshman quarterback Kalen Riley will lead this offense. 12 touchdown passes, five interceptions, 1,437 yards completing 112 of 182 passes. And he's got some veteran targets to go after. Right now, they are going to open with an empty backfield. Two receivers left, three right. And Riley in the shotgun, far side hash, moving left to right and a quick toss to the left. It's complete at the line of scrimmage. And then a nice move made by Chandler Curtis to get up to the 30-yard line before the strong safety, Brian O.K., brought him down, actually give him beyond the 30 to the 32, and that's a gain of seven yards. Yes, yeah, simple safe pass in the flats with the two the trips to that side and use the other two guys as blockers. T. Mitchell in the game in the running back spot now to the left of Riley, and they will hand it to him coming here to the near side. That's a short side. Got to the corner and got out of bounds across the 35 to the 39-yard line. Darius Curse ran him out of bounds, but a gain of seven again, and 14 yards on the first two plays for this Mercer offense. They have it first and 10 at their own 39. Yeah, Chris Washburn had contain on that play and just got sucked in, and that's what created the space and allowed the running back to get around the corner. Two receivers each side, and Riley, quick toss coming left, and we read that one well. Darius Curse, the corner coming in, and upsetting T. Mitchell after he gained a yard to the 40. Chris Washington also there to help. You know, we hadn't seen the quick pitch in about 20 years, and we saw it twice last week, and we saw it here on the third play. Something old is new again, right? Second down and nine. Two receivers near side, one far side. H back to the right. And Riley dropping to throw out of the pistol, looking left, throws off his back foot, wings it to the far sideline, out of bounds. Incomplete at double coverage there. Pressure was coming. He threw it in the general vicinity of Marquis Servin, and really fortunate that ball was as badly off target as it was because it could have been picked. Yeah, we had OK and also Kears back there, Curse back there for the coverage. And uh, if he had put that anywhere close to the receiver, that was going to be an interception going our way. Big first down, big third down here, first time. This. Third down and nine. Powell and fans starting to make some noise. Two receivers each side, ball near side hash. And Riley fumbles to snap, picks it up, and we got him back at the 37-yard line. Chinadu Oconia there to wrap him up. He dropped the snap, he picked it up, moved a couple of steps forward, and then Oconia wrapped his big arms around him a loss of two, they'll spot it at the 38, and the punting unit will come on for Mercer. And great pressure initially from Jalen Reed. He did a swim move over his guy, and once the quarterback picked up the ball, Jalen Reed was right there, and that's what forced him to step up. But a great job by our defense of getting off the field. Freshman Grant Goopel to punt it. Logan McCarter standing at his own 15-yard line. No pressure, wobbly, short kick, hits at the 30, bounces inside the 20, rolls inside the 15, and will roll all the way down near the 12 yard line. Mercer had a player a little wobbly and having to be assisted off the field, and we are going to have a media timeout. So. We'll see Furman's offense for the first time. They'll be taking over officially at their own 13-yard line when we come back. No score, 12.29 to go first quarter. And you're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. It's time for the bright lights of football season. Time for the hard-hitting, quick-cutting, playmaking moments that keep us on the edge of our seats. As the hometown heroes continue their quest for gridiron glory. This year, Ingles is sponsoring more than the tail. Clay handed today. This year, we came to play. Ingles, the official sponsor of Furman Football. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine Team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. 
Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. The Furman defense gets off the field after giving up one first down to Mercer, and now the Paladin offense will get its first crack at things. Pinned back at its own 13-yard line here on this homecoming Saturday afternoon at Paladin Stadium. So this Mercer defense, 16 takeaways. They've had three takeaways, at least three, in four of their seven games this season. And they have been particularly stingy when opposing teams get into the red zone. They've allowed points only 65% of the time. You know, just an interesting little uh, conversation there during that timeout. Clay Hendricks and Chad Staggs were talking about things that Mercer ran on that first series. And I'm sure Clay was pointing out a couple things that he thinks Bobby will come back with. We open in the eye with Dirks at the fullback spot and Antonio Wilcox at the tailback. And a handoff to Wilcox running straight ahead. He crosses the 15 and gets to the 17 for a gain of four on first down. And just another example of how creative we are on offense. We haven't run the eye all season long and here we come, first play. Quick throw off to the right, out of the eye again, complete and dragged down a yard short of the first down was Thomas Gordon. Cam Lott, the corner, on the stop. And it'll be third down and about a yard, maybe a little less than a yard, the ball officially at the 22-yard line. Yeah, if we're gonna line up in the eye here on third and short, we gotta actually go flip Layton and go strong to the left side. We're close enough now, just run a quarterback sneak, get your first down. Actually going to the double wing. With Wilcox to full back, motion right to left, hand it to Antonio, first down and more as he blasts up near the 30-yard line before Lee Bennett could trip him up. Give him seven yards to the 29, and the Paladins have their initial first down. You know, one of the bread and butter plays of the uh, Bobby Lamb, Tim Sorrells era is sort of that just little dive play to the fullback in short yardage situations, and that's exactly what we ran there. Pistol two backs behind Blazjowski. He handed to Keelan Dirks, and he's got a couple of yards as he crosses the 30 to the 31. Defensive end Isaiah Bueller on the stop. The Dirks is going to have to come out. His uh, helmet came out. Came off after that play. Second and eight. Wilcox in at the fullback in the double wing. Motion from right to left. Now everything stops. They look to the sidelines. They'll reset it. Far side hash going right to left. Furman's first possession of the game. Scoreless. Quick handoff. Wilcox, and he's got room running right. Crosses the 35 to the 36 for a gain of five yards. Malik Fleming, the free safety, there to stop him. And the Paladins with another third and short, this time a third down and a little more than two. And what was interesting about that formation, again, we flipped Bo Layton, and he was playing the tight end on the left side. And we had the uh, freshman, Jake Walker from Cartersville, who's a tight end, lined up essentially at right tackle. And that's where we ran the football. Ridge Gibson in at the fullback spot. Double wing, but out of the pistol this time, and a speed sweep. Hand it to, is that Moorhead? And he is going to be very close to the first down, but is going to be about a yard shy up to the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. So give him the 38. So, yeah, he'll be a yard shy. And let's see if Furman decides to go for it here. They are not. They are putting the punting unit on the field. Yeah, Mercer did a good job of stringing that speed sweep out, and when Moorhead turned the corner, he did not have any blockers in front of him, and to credit Mercer with a good play defensively in the short yardage situation. Chandler Curtis back deep to receive Mercer with 10 men on the line of scrimmage. 
showing like they're going to come with pressure. Now they kind of back out of it as Hollingsworth rolls to his right and booms one out of there. Curtis heading backwards. It hits and bites inside the five and hops back across the five and is down at the nine-yard line. What a kick by John Croft Hollingsworth. And uh, both Bobby and Clay are avid golfers, and so the golf analogy here will be appropriate. That thing checked up nicely, much like a uh, – sand wedge into a soft green and checked up nicely for us inside the 10. My math is right, 53 yards on the punt. They said there would be no math on the weekend. Yeah. So flip field position, Penn Mercer back at its nine and Bears will have their second offensive possession. They'll go empty backfield again. Two receivers left, three right. That's the short side, and Riley, quarterback draw, has a big hole running straight ahead across the 15, the 20, first down, and finally brought down Number one, Caleb as he Riley got just beyond the 22-yard line. Chris Washington finally stopped him, but 14-yard gain on the quarterback draw on first down. And they hustle right back to the line of scrimmage, and there was a lot of movement as the ball was snapped. And I think false start on right guard Caleb Yates. And I'll back him up five to the 18 yard line. Two receivers each side, ball on the far side hash. Riley, play action, quick throw underneath, complete. Got four of the five yards down again. Sam Walker, actually he didn't go down on that first contact and stayed on his feet and got up across the 25 to the 26 yard line. What should have been a four yard gain becomes an eight yard gain. He actually was down too because his elbow hit the ground and his arm hit the ground. But Second and seven. Just a silly call. Second and seven at the 26. Scoreless game, first quarter, 8.22 to go. Riley, little pump fake to the right. Delay handoff straight ahead to T. Mitchell, and he'll cross the 30 to the 31. Raynard Ellis brought him down, and they go right to the line of scrimmage on third down and two. And you can tell Mercer's concerned about the pass rush or the, the pressure from Jalen Reed because everything up the middle has been sort of a delay. Uh, sort of a misdirection type thing. Mitchell to the left of Riley. Now he'll move into the slot. They empty the backfield. Two on each side plus an H back on the right. Mitchell in motion. Fake the handoff to him. Riley will keep it. He's got the first down as he dives ahead to the 35-yard line. Needed two. He got four. Jalen Reed dragged him down from behind. Yeah, just good execution there on that third, day, third down. Obviously benefiting from the blown call on the, uh, on the pass, but just a good execution there on the zone read and getting the first down. So Mercer moving the chains again. Powell and showing some pressure as they walk Ferrara up. Here he comes. Swing pass off to the right. Juggling catch by Mitchell out of the backfield. And he is leveled at the sideline by Raynard Ellis. Knocked him out of bounds. And all that for a two-yard gain. And that's a true freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. And he came with some force. Talked to Clay Hendricks about those two young middle linebackers, and he said they make a lot of mistakes, but there's something to be said for guys who can see the ball and go tackle the ball. And that's what Ellis and McCoy have been doing all season long. Second down and eight, pistol set. And Riley dropping to throw, looking left, throwing far sidelines. Got a man out there, nice catch. Nope, juggled it, could not hang on. It's an out pattern. Avery Ward got his hands on it, could not control it cleanly. That's a break for the Paladins. That would have been a completion up near midfield. Yeah, Lemmings fell down. And actually, he landed out of bounds. Yeah, Lemmings fell down. That's what created the space, unfortunately, for us to pass. Airmail just a little bit let him out of bounds. So third down and eight. Furman's defense trying to get off the field. Again, C.J. Leggett in at the running back spot now to the left of Kalen Riley in the pistol. Riley dropping to throw. Pressure coming. Steps up. Throws over the middle. Complete. 
to his tight end, Sam Walker, first down, right at midfield, and Brian O.K. there to finally stop him. A gain of 13 yards right to the midfield stripe, and Riley did a good job of keeping his head as the pocket collapsed. Pump fake, quick pass, and a completion that'll be good for close to another first down, throwing right side to Chandler Curtis. Yeah, they got away with a motion penalty there, but they came back on the third down play, just ran a little uh, play to the tight end. He split the linebackers and uh, not much Second pressure. Good throw and catch for the first down. Second down in inches. And they hand it to Leggett. Little delay, he's got the first down as he gets inside the 35 to the 33 and Elijah McCoy, first purple shirt there. Right now, this second offense possession for Mercer, starting back at their own nine. They've done a nice job of mixing things up, changing tempo. Got the Furman defense on its heels. 5.54 to go, first quarter clock running. And they've done a good job of converting on third downs. Empty the backfield again. Three receivers left, one right. Ball near side hash. And they'll motion. Mitchell back into the backfield and they'll quick pitch it to him going left to the wide side wow. of the field. That's a block in the back. Boy, there was all kinds of traffic. Number 28, he ends up getting about down, 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 nine yards field, inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. That's just a textbook block in the back that gets missed by the same guy who missed two. the earlier call. Bradford Lemmings there make the play and just gets clipped. And he gets clipped low. Spotted at the 25 yard line. It'll be second down and one. And they go handoff and Mitchell running left has the first down as he squirts down to the 22 yard line. Brian OK, the strong safety. Sticks a hat in there to bring him down. Yeah, this is what we talked about. This is four point play territory here. We've got to bow our backs a little bit and force Mercer to kick the field goal. And when they get into the red zone, they're 26 of 28. And they're on the cusp now. 20 touchdowns and six field goals. Backfield empty again. Now they'll bring Leggett in motion. Fake it to him. Pressure coming. Riley avoids it. Throws at the goal line, and it's broken up and nearly intercepted. Trying to get it to the tight end, Sam Walker. And Joe Farrar came flying in at the last minute, got a hand on it. Ball was in the air for a tantalizing second or two, but nobody was close enough to grab it. Yeah, we had almost on both ends of that play because Elijah McCoy was back there with the pressure and then Farrar. Officials timeout for an injured player. That's Jalen Reed yeah, too. Yeah, Jalen Reed is down on a knee. That is not good. And then Joe Farrar read it late and you know the old adage in football, never throw late across the middle and that's what he did. And Joe Farrar hey, there, and if he'd been just a split Calvin second sooner, he would come up with the interception. Well, we'll take a break. We'll come back. When we do, we'll check in with Marcus and see if he had a, a view as to what happened with Jalen Reed. No score, but Mercer driving will return after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Tailgating is a song heard across campuses, parking lots, and open fields, where all you need is a Bojangles Big Bow Box and a love for the game. So bring your chicken, your biscuits, your fixins, and your tea, because game day doesn't begin with a whistle. It begins with a Bojangles tailgate. Every tailgate starts with Bojangles. Grab an eight, 12, or 20-piece tailgate special. Bojangles, it's bow time. There's a reason why year after year more people trust Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, C. Dan Joyner Realtors, to get the job done. It's because we deliver the highest level of real estate services with the utmost integrity, quality, and professionalism. We love what we do, and it shows in every transaction. We've been the undisputed upstate market leader for over 20 years because we do what's right. We handle every transaction with a smile, and we're committed to making your home journey the best it can be. For your best move ever, contact Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. See Dan Joyner Realtors today. Visit cdanjoyner.com and let's get started. Be sure to stay tuned later for the Ingles Halftime Show and the Pepsi Paladin Post Game here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. 
Back at Paladin Stadium, Jalen Reed able to walk off under his own power. Marcus, did you see what happened to him? I honestly did not, but it's a good sign that he's able to walk off under his own power unassisted, and they haven't been a tent for eval. I'll let you guys know if I find out anything more. Thank you, sir. Mercer back at the line of scrimmage now, second down and 10 at the Furman 22-yard line, 4.23 to go, scoreless first quarter. This Mercer drive started back at its own nine-yard line. Riley in the pistol with Alex Lakes to his left. Ball on the far side hash, three receivers in the pattern. And they'll motion Curtis off the slot. They pitch it to him moving forward at the 20, the 15, the 10, and dragged down inside the five at the four by Elijah McCoy, 18 yards, first and goal, Mercer. Yeah. Curtis also played for Bobby's brother, Hal, at uh, Calhoun, Georgia, as did the starting quarterback, just a simple speed sweep and throwing it forward to him. And uh, once he got around the corner, we didn't have anybody there. And that's actually a forward pass because he shoveled it forward. Mitchell in the backfield and the snap. Hand it to Mitchell and he will get to about the one before Reynard Ellis was able to stop him. So they are right on the cusp. And that's, the first time, that's the first time they've done a traditional 2017 handoff up the middle. Obviously, Jalen Reed not in the game. Staying in the pistol look. The receiver wide to each side. Brings Mitchell up to his left. Hands it to him again, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Number 28, T. Mitchell in for the Mercury touchdown. It's the sixth rushing touchdown of the season for T. Mitchell. And Mercer jumps out first with 3.17 to go here in quarter number one. It's 6-0 with the extra point coming. Cole Fisher for the point after. He's missed two of them this year, but not that one. He drilled that the one through, and good. it's seven nothing. Mercer with three seventeen to go here in quarter number one. Break, and we'll return to Paladin Stadium after you hear this from Christopher Trucks on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Winning tradition. That defines Furman Paladin's football with Christopher Trucks. I'm Clay Hendricks, head football coach for Paladin. Winning upstate businesses around And we help our football team by providing us with the truck we receive from the winners from game to game. For 60 years, Christopher Trucks has set the standard. Join with them in support of Furman Paladin's football this season as we wrap up our home season November 11th with the Citadel. Located in the heart of Greenville, South Carolina, Carolina's vibrant downtown business and entertainment district, the Hampton Inn and Suites at River Place offers a premier lodging choice with unsurpassed views and a warm, inviting decor. Within a long fly ball of floor field in the West End and an even shorter walk to Falls Park on the Reedy, the Hampton Inn and Suites at River Place is surrounded by a multitude of dining and entertainment options, including the Lazy Goat Restaurant near the hotel lobby. Hampton Inn and Suites is a preferred choice of the Furman Paladins, so make it your choice the next time you're coming to downtown Greenville. The Mercer scoring drive, 15 plays, 91 yards, 6 minutes, 6 seconds off the first quarter clock. The one-yard touchdown run by T. Mitchell, and the Bears have jumped out on top here 7-0 on this homecoming 2017 Saturday afternoon at Paladin Stadium. Yeah, credit Mercer there. Just a good, solid 90-yard touchdown drive. Mixed it up in the running game and the passing game. Some timely third down conversions. They were able to respond to the uh, false start penalty right as the drive started. And uh, you know, we had a couple chances there to make some plays and not able to make the play, not able to get the interception, not able to get the, uh, the sack. And as a result, we find ourselves down. The good news is I don't think anybody thought the final score would be 7-0. So, uh, 
it's still early. Yeah, Mercer two of three on third down early on. They converted both of those on that drive, and now Cole Fisher to kick it away. 40 kickoffs this year has not had a touchback yet. Cam Burnett to the far side, Logan Carter to the near side. And the kick will sail wide to the left and go out of bounds at the one yard line and Furman will get it on the penalty at the 35. So let's see how this Powelton offense responds. Check in with Marcus McMorris down on the Mastinal Store sidelines, Marcus. Yes, sir. No update on Jalen as of yet. He is out of the tent and uh, looks to be paying attention to the defense coaches right now, but uh, I'll keep an eye on him and see if they anything new comes up. Yeah, the good news is he walked over and the tent was up, and about the time he got there, it was almost like cartoonish from the old uh, huff and puff, I'll blow your house down, because as soon as he got there, he got within a few steps of it, the house came falling down, and Jalen went back to where he was. So the Paladins will start this drive at their own 35-yard line. I've never seen an officiating crew so confused about spotting the ball after a kickoff out of bounds. Far side hash going right to left. Two receivers both here to the near side. That's the wide side. Two backs behind Blazjowski in the pistol. And they hand off straight ahead to Keelan Dirks, and Keelan will get just a yard to the 36. And one of the things you can see defensively, Mercer's going to play us running the ball, particularly on first down. We've been a pretty run dominant, and when I say pretty, about 80 to 90% of the time, we're running the ball on first down, and Mercer stacked the box that time. Going to the eye with Gibson, the fullback, and Dirks, the quote-unquote tailback. And they hand it to Keelan, and he picks his way ahead for just a couple of yards, and that's it. A bunch of white jerseys. This is a Mercer Swarming him. Sorry about that, Dan. This is a Mercer defense that's only given up 138 yards rushing. And they played Auburn tough. Yeah, before the season started, they dubbed themselves the Legion of Chaos. And they have 16 takeaways to their credit so far this season through seven games. Gain of three, third down and six. Furman will shift into the double wing with everything tight. And Blazjowski dropping to throw. Nothing to the right, rolling out to his left. Has time, winds up, lets it go, and it is batted away at the last minute. Incomplete, looking for Andy Shumpert underneath. Had Logan McCarter running open deep down the field, but the Blazer couldn't get himself turned around in time to let that thing go. It looked like he may have had some room had he chosen to run ball and try to get the first down and said he's going there, and that's obviously interference, but doesn't get called. He had his right arm on the hip. I think it might be too early to tell you this is the same crew we had for Elon, but uh, it is. Hollingsworth to kick, Curtis standing at his own 19 yard line. Rugby style kick again, another good one high, wobbly kick that turns over Curtis back to his 12, takes it straight ahead up across the 20 and dropped at the 22 by Rich Gibson. Yeah, Rich Gibson just a solid special teams performer throughout his Furman career and that time took on the blocker, maintained contain and once the return guy, Curtis, made his commitment, Rich Gibson right there to make the tackle. So Mercer after a 91 yard touchdown drive on its last possession, back at it here on first and 10 at its own 22. CJ Leggett will open at the running back spot to the left of Kalen Riley in the pistol. Far side hash moving left to right and play action throw down the middle walker the tight end wide open all the way out across midfield and brought down at the Furman 47 yard line by brian okay the strong safety yeah joe farrar that time had the tight end and just got bit on the play fake and they go quick handoff leg it little stutter step in the backfield to get away from a would-be tackler got across the 45 to the 44 
for a gain of three before Tyler Boyles could stop him. Yeah, good job of our defense. We really weren't lined up at the snap of that football and uh, just able to just make something happen. Second down and seven. Two receivers to the right. Now Curtis will motion and they do that little speed sweep forward pass to him and it's another big play inside the 40, inside the 35 and see where they're gonna mark him down at the 31 yard line of the Paladins, Washington and OK stop, uh, stop him but another gain of 12. And credit the Mercer receivers, Irvin and also Sam Walker down there just blocking our guys, uh, Kierce and uh, OK. 33 seconds left in the quarter. Clock running 7-0 Mercer, and they are driving again. Riley looking to the sideline, steps up, says something to his offensive line. Now back to the pistol set. Takes a snap, and a delay handoff, and Leggett is wrapped up in the backfield by Jalen Reed. So he's feeling pretty good. Yeah, we've been able to get some penetration now against this Mercer offensive line, particularly when Jalen Reed is in there. That time a little delayed handoff and Reed right there to make the play for a three yard loss. Good play to end the quarter. I'll take it back to the 34 yard line and that will be the final play of quarter number one. And Mercer had its way in the first quarter leading seven nothing and driving again. They'll be back with quarter number two in just a moment. But first a word from Bon Secours St. Francis here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur for playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. Before the invention of the telephone and the internet, the general store was a vital link to the outside world. From coffee to cast iron and cradles to caskets, you could find it all. Today, the Mass General Store has all you need for life, from your favorite brands, Columbia, Patagonia, Carhartt, King, The North Face, and more. A destination since 1883. Visit the Mass General Store in downtown Greenville or online at massgeneralstore.com. Along with David Cobb and Jeremy, Jeremy Arnett upstairs, Marcus McMorris on the Mass General Store sidelines. I'm Dan Scott. Second quarter about to unfold here at Paladin Stadium. 7-0 Mercer and the Bears in Furman territory again, although facing a second down and 13 when we switch into the field. Yeah, first quarter statistically dominated by Mercer, as you would expect. Mercer ran 24 offensive plays to Furman's nine. Mercer with nine first downs to Paladin's only one. And time of possession, 10 minutes, 17 seconds of those first 15 minutes to the Mercer Bears. Kalen Riley in that first quarter, 8 of 11, 101 yards. Throwing the football, T. Mitchell, seven carries, 28 yards. Blazjowski, one out of two, five yards. Antonio Wilcox has three carries for 17 yards. And the defense, again, really on its heels now. Yeah, Mercer did, as we, we talked about, Mercer did a great job there in that first quarter of just mixing up the plays, uh, not able to really put any pressure on the quarterback except maybe two of those 24 plays and really not having any, any type of pressure. He was able to throw it uh, with eight completions and but do not abandon ship. And Marcus, as we talked about a moment ago, they've done a really good job not only mixing plays, but also changing up the tempo. And we'll get back with Marcus McMorris in just a moment. Ready to go, second quarter. 
from the 34-yard line of the Paladins. Empty backfield again. Now going right to left is Mercer. Three receivers far side, two near side, and a throw to the far side complete. And it's inside the 30, inside the 25. That's Curtis, and he's all the way down to the 23-yard line, and that's going to leave them with a third down and two. Jonah Tibbs had to chase him down from behind. We had a chance to make the play at the line of scrimmage. We had limited no more than a one- or two-yard gain, and credit Curtis for being elusive and getting those extra yards to make this a third and short. Third down and two. Well, his defense needs something good to happen right now. Motion left to right. Fake the handoff to Leggett. The quarterback keeps it, and he is going to be right at the stick, but just short. And this will bring up an interesting fourth down call for Bobby Lamb. Yeah, that was one of those four-point four plays there, and I'm sure Bobby's going to go for it here. The kickers are staying on the sideline, so a chance for our defense here to essentially get a turnover. And they're quickly back to the line of scrimmage on fourth down. And a little less in the yard. Riley stands up, looks to the sideline. Still looking. Ten seconds on the play clock, and now Mercer is going to call a timeout and discuss things here. Well, what would you do, Dan Scott? You're up seven. You've got some momentum. About a yard. It's not a short. It's, a, it's inside of a yard, but... Uh, you know, if we can stop them here, that's obviously leaving points on the board. I think you go for it. I, I am. I think there's something to be said for getting some points here. Paladin's defense needs something to turn the momentum around. Yeah. And if you're able to get a stop here, you're – giving them a little boost of confidence that right now they haven't had. Yeah, it's obviously a great chance for our defense to come in and make a play that could be a game-changing kind of play. Now let's see. They are going to line up with Riley under center, Leggett in the backfield, two receivers to the right, everything else tight. Offset eye behind the quarterback on fourth down and a little less than a full yard. And Riley will take it. We stood him up. We hit him, we drove him back, and he did not get it. Furman holds, turnover on downs, Paladin football. Yeah, just a great job up front, Jalen Reed, Jonah Tibbs, a lot of penetration. A.K. Olasanya came in there and just kept him and rode him like you, like a prairie animal almost, just kind of just kept, get, kept going, kept going, kept going and never let him get across the line of scrimmage, but a great job there by our defense of creating that turnover. Media timeout with 13.40 to go in the first half. Furman down 7 nothing, but the offense will have it when we come back after this from Palmetto Pride on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Palmetto Pride, your anti-litter and beautification organization has been helping keep South Carolina beautiful for nearly 15 years. Our volunteers picked up 7,395,000 pounds of trash in the past year. Do your part to keep South Carolina beautiful and don't litter. If you see someone littering, call the Litter Buster Hotline 1-877-725-7733 or try our new Trash Tracker app. Remember, litter trashes everyone. Last year, lottery players took home more than $924 million, but they weren't the only winners. Since the lottery launched in 2002, more than 1.4 million scholarships have been awarded to South Carolina students, and millions have gone to support K-12 and community education programs. So when you play the South Carolina Education Lottery, you're not just taking a chance, you're also giving one. For more information, visit sceducationlottery.com. Don't forget to tune in every Sunday at 7 p.m. for the Clay Hendricks Show, live from Short Fields in downtown Traveler's Rest. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Well, this defense needed a shot in the arm, and they got it. Marcus McMorris down on the sidelines. Were you surprised at that play call? It's been kind of a, a, a point of discussion up here, formation and play call with what they've had so much success with. 
they decide to go tight and run right at our defensive front. I can honestly say I wasn't surprised. Their defense has performed very well up until this point. Uh, Coach Lamb is one of those, he's kind of greedy, and sometimes it's to a fault, and this time he, he comes up a little bit short. But uh, now our offense has to perform. It's not, we can't just put this game all on the defense. They gave us a little spark there, and let's hope Blaze can take it to the end zone. They want to come back at the TV show. Joe Farrar also there, just a stone wall there on that quarterback sneak. All right, from our own 23-yard line, first possession of the second quarter going left to right, out of the pistol, option, pitch, and we've got some running room, 30, 35, 40, that's Moorhead, and there's the first big running play of the game for this Furman offense. Eric Jackson, the strong safety, brought him down, but not before he picked up 17 yards on the option. Well executed there, Blaze Jasky took the pitch all the way to the ultimate spot and delivered the pitch to Moorhead in stride. Back to the eye and a handoff to Dirks running left and he'll get four yards running off tackle. Eric Jackson again on the stop, but give him four to the 44 yard line, second and six. Dirks out, Wilcox in, in there with Ridge Gibson. They'll stay in that eye formation look. Receiver split to each side, tied in right. Play action, Blazer dropping, throwing down the middle, complete! Into Mercer territory, across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Andy Shumpert making the catch in traffic, and Lee Bennett brought him down, but it's a big shot and a big, big arm shown by Blaze Jowski there. They started up front with a pass protection because Blaze Jowski initially wanted to go to Logan McCarter on an out route. He was covered and he came back to Shumpert late who lined up in the right side tight end and just ran a little hook route in the middle of the field. Staying in the eye on first down. Handoff straight ahead again. This time Run by number 25, Wilcox will get just a yard and that's about it. On well, that last play, Jacob Conrad came in for Bo Layton. Layton's been battling some injuries. Actually, sorry, Layton's still in there. Well, Jacob Conrad came in in the place of Godwin. Thank you, Jeremy. Second down and nine at the 38. Seven nothing Mercer. Powellin's first trip into Bears territory. Staying in the eye, Blaze Jowski three step drop. Quick throw out to the right. It's complete. Gordon inside the 30. Knocked out of bounds. And a late hit flag coming. That's going to be 15 more on Eric Jackson, the strong safety. A great second effort there by Gordon. He caught the ball in the flats. Turned around, realized he had room to go, and then went straight at the defenders. Got a five extra yards before the penalty. Actually a face mask on Steven Huza instead of a late hit penalty, but they're still going to add 15 to it. The play was good to the 26. So they'll take it half the distance. It'll take it down to the 13. But Gordon just went after Eric Jackson, the corner. Back in the pistol with Dirks. A step behind and to the left. Hand it to Dirks, and he gets down close to the 10-yard line before LaMarcus Bailey took his legs out from under. Good recognition there by Dirks, where he wanted to go initially between the gap between the center and the left guard clogged up, and he was able to redirect and shuffle to his left and at least get a couple yards out of the play. Two-yard gain to the 11. Wilcox checks in. Moorhead in the backfield as well. They'll split McCarter out wide left. DeLuca wide to the right in the pistol set. Now Blaze Jowski will step up, say something to his offensive line, rearrange his running backs. Three seconds on the play clock. Gets the snap. Hand off to Wilcox, and Antonio crosses the 10 and gets down to the eight yard line for a gain of three. Marcus Bailey again on the stop. So now you've got a third down and six. You can get a first down right around the three yard line. We continue to try to pound the ball right at this Mercer defensive front. Let's see what we do here on third and six from the eight. Blazjowski will go under center. They'll shift into the double wing. 
Motion from left to right. The Blazer dropping to throw. Swings at the Moorhead. Coming out of the backfield. Spin move at the 10 and dropped at the 5. And he'll be uh, just a yard or so shy of the first down. As Jeremy points out, he had Wilcox going the other way who was wide open. They had the wheel route either side of the field. Now it's decision time for Clay Hendricks inside the 10. It's fourth. It looks like it's a little bit more than a yard. Well, Furman got the ball by stopping Mercer on fourth down. And now the Powell is going to go for it on fourth down, a little more than a yard. Quick pitch on the option. Wilcox dropped it. He bounced it to himself. Picked it up and he got to the pylon near side. Touchdown, Paladins. Exactly how you draw it up. The one hop bounce, fortunately for us, right up to Wilcox. Woo! Well designed play as they fake the handoff, go quick pitch outside. Wilcox dribbled it to himself, picked it up, and still got to the pylon. Does he get an assist as well? Here is the point after by Atkins, and it is up and good. And Furman marches right down the field and ties this game up at seven with 9.28 to go in the first half. Timeout on the field. We'll return after this from Ingalls. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. It's time for the bright lights of football season. Time for the hard-hitting, quick-cutting, play-making moments that keep us on the edge of our seats. As the hometown heroes continue their quest for gridiron glory, this year, Ingles is sponsoring more than the tailgate. This year, we came to play. Ingles, the official sponsor of Furman Football. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. Furman's touchdown drive, nine plays, 77 yards in four minutes and 12 seconds. And a officially six yard touchdown run by Antonio Wilcox on fourth down and a little more than a yard. And Furman ties it at seven. And Jeremy Arnett has our first scoreboard update of the afternoon. Jeremy? A look at SoCon action. In Spartanburg, Wofford leads Samford 7-0, just started the second quarter in Lexington, Virginia, VMI, 7-0 over Western Carolina. That one also just started the second quarter. And early in the first, Chattanooga and the Citadel are tied at zero. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. We'll be keeping an eye on those. And actually, as we close, as you close it out, Western Carolina just kicked the field goal. So now they trail at VMI. 7-3 in the early going. And watching that touchdown play on replay, you gotta give credit to Reed Krober. He pulled and he was responsible for getting the getting the edge for the Paladins, and that's what gave Wilcox time to recover. And again, let's credit Antonio Wilcox for not panicking. He dropped the pitch. It was a perfect pitch, but he dropped it. He didn't panic and uh, able to pick it up and not only advance it for the first down, but get the score. Hollingsworth's kick. Curtis will take it right at the goal line, near side, into the middle of the field, across the 15, the 20, the 25, up across the 30, and all the way out across the 35 to the 38-yard line before Jordan Willis finally stopped him. Curtis with a big return of 38 yards, and Mercer will have good field position to start this drive in a 7-7 ball game with 9.18 to go in the first half. He's had a pretty active first half, and uh, you can tell he's a little chippy because he uh, pointed to the Furman crowd as he got up after that return. Right to left, far side hash. Two receivers here to the near side, one up top. Leggett to the left of the quarterback. Riley in the backfield. Riley going to throw. Look right, nothing there. Rolling to his left, and we hit him, and we got it. 
pursuit from Parker Stokes and nailed him back at the 31 yard line for a loss of seven. They give up an average of one sack a game. That is our second here in this first half and a big defensive play on first down. A great job by the coverage guys. You could tell Mercer was doing a three step and trying to throw it pretty quick and we were locked on to all the receivers. And once the quarterback scrambled, he was going to his left, tried to turn, and about that time Stokes there to, as you call, to deliver the hit and get the sack. But great play defensively on that first down. Second down and 17. I'll send two receivers to the far side. That's the wide side, and now a whistle stops things, and Mercer is going to call another timeout. They had to because the play clock was about to hit zero. Yeah, Bobby a little upset with his uh, offense there. Obviously, Matt is looking at his uh, freshman quarterback, Riley, because he called that timeout out of frustration because they didn't have the right formation in. Let's go back down to Marcus. and It's funny how this game works, Marcus. Mercer had everything going their way, and that one stop on fourth down completely turned the momentum, at least for the moment, in Furman's favor. Right, and, it, and that's a hard call to make, uh, especially with your defense playing the way they were, as I stated before. But we come out on the plus, so I'm completely fine with the call. Uh, we drive down and risk it ourselves on fourth down, at, just as Mercer did, and we come up with seven. So uh, it's just a roll of the dice. It's a completely different setup but uh, and uh, history, but one of the great fourth down plays in Furman history, I think, was the 2001 season that ended up with us playing for the national championship when Nichols State came in here, had fourth and one inside their own 30 late in the game, went for it, and we stopped and scored to tie it up and win the game in overtime. Second down and 17 after the timeout, Riley. Play action, swings it out to the right side, complete the Leggett. We had him behind the 30, he shed a tackler and pushed a pile across the 35 yard line and out of bounds up around the 37. Elijah McCoy finally got there. Couldn't see who it was in the purple jersey. It was Jordan Willis who had him back around the 28, but could not hold him. He had a chance to make the play right about the line of scrimmage, but credit Willis, he was actually part of the pile on the tackle. But again, third and long here, we're gonna go to that 3-8 defense. Third down and 11. Mercer two out of four on third down so far here in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven games, 7.45 to go. And Riley will hand off on a delay and getting up across the 45 to about the 46 is Alex Lakes. He'll be a couple yards shy of the first down. Again, Jordan Willis on the stop and that should bring the Mercer punting unit onto the field and it does. Yeah, I like that defense because it's basically going to get that defense in third and long situations say, we'll let you get some yards, but we're not going to let you get the yards necessary to get to the line to gain. Well, and they needed uh, 11, they got 10. So, stopped them at just the right time. Bend but don't break. Grant Goopel to punt it. McCarter standing at his own 14 yard line. No rush. High spiral over McCarter's head as he calls for the fair catch and it bounces into the end zone and Furman will have it first and 10 at its own 20 yard line with 6.55 to go here in the opening half of play. Just a subtle thing, but just great technique there by McCarter because what he did, he realized the ball was gonna be over his head, but he didn't give that away and he signals for the fair catch and runs towards the Mercer defenders about the 15 yard line. So they're all covering him because they, don't, they did not locate the football and the ball hits about the five yard and bounces into the end zone, but great technique of, of decoy by McCarter. So Furman's offense fresh off a touchdown drive back out after it. By the way, the Wilcox touchdown, his team leading seventh of the year and his fourth in the last three games. We are in the eye on first down. Play action, Blazjowski rolling right, quick throw, McCarter goes up high to get it and steps out of bounds in front of his own bench at the 27 yard line, gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Godwin back in at left tackle, but then Blaze Jowski just flips that ball about 40 yards right on the money to McCarter. One of the things you can see defensively for Mercer, they're gonna give us cushion on the corners. They're not gonna give up the big play. Second and three. 
Staying in the eye and option going left, Blazjowski hit and he's dropped for a loss of a couple. Will Conaway, the inside linebacker, stopped and that play looked like it was busted. Yeah, Blazjowski turned to fake a handoff to the left or to the right rather, and there was nobody there. Yeah, you're not going to get people to honor a play fake when there's nobody coming for the fake. Blazjowski just opened the wrong way on that play. Third down and almost a full five after the loss. Blazer will go to the pistol. Motion from left to right. That's Moorhead. Blazer rolling to his right. Still looking, still looking, still looking, and throws complete to Moorhead. And he's got the first down, and then Blazer was hit late. Flag is down, and that will be an extra 15 yards. Boy, he... Waited till the last possible minute to complete that pass to Moorhead. Both of them right on the boundary line. And then the late hit. Yeah, just a great job. Organized rollout to our sideline. Blaze Jowski waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and found Moorhead. About a six yard throw straight in front of him on the sideline. And then we're going to get 15 more for the late hit. That's Mercer's second. Big penalty on defense, but just a great job by Blaze Jowski of not giving up on the play. Clearly a personal foul because he hit Blaze Jowski about two yards out of bounds. Yeah, the inside linebacker, Will Conaway, was the guilty party. So up to the 48 yard line after the 15 yard walk off. Paladin's nearing midfield, 538 clock running. First half, 7 7 score. Blaze Jowski says something to Ridge Gibson in the pistol, hand it to Dirks, and he'll cross midfield, get four yards to the Bear 48. Good. Sidney Otiwu on the stop. Good recognition by Blaze Jowski. He had Gibson step up about a foot and then was pointing out the fact that Mercer was coming with a run stunt, which is exactly what they did. Gibson got there to chop his guy down. That created the space, and you know, with five minutes to go here, we're gonna get the ball back to start the third quarter which adds even more importance to this offensive series. So confusion on the personnel. Now Moorhead coming on late. 10 seconds on the play clock. And the double wing with Dirks the fullback. Five seconds. Handoff to Keelan. And uh, he bounces off of the initial contact at the line of scrimmage and able to fall forward to the 45-yard line. Should have been stopped for no gain. Ended up getting three yards. Isaiah Bueller, the defensive end, rode him down there. Well, that's going to make it a third down and three. Yeah, Dirk should have been stopped about the 48. Just kept his legs going. You know, he's got such a low center of gravity. Anyway, and he's a big kid. Just kept going forward. Picked up three yards. Third down and three. And the Blazer handoff, and that is Dirks again. And he will be stopped after just a gain of a yard to the 44-yard line. Will Conaway brought him down and inside the 44, almost the 43. This is going to be fourth down and a long yard, and at least for the moment, Furman's showing like they're going to go for it. Yeah, no question we're going to go for it here again, fourth and short, but we just keep trying to pound inside. Mercer pretty stout up there. Double wing. And they hand it to Dirks again. First down as he crashes inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. They are determined they're going to run the ball right at this Mercer defensive front. Lee Bennett and Will Conaway, the two inside linebackers, finally stopped him, but not until he picked up four yards to the bare 39. Bush and Schmidt there, the center and left guard. You go behind your two centers. Nice alleyway. When it's fourth and a yard and your running back does not get touched until he's two yards past the line of scrimmage, that's a good sign. Everything tight, and they hand it to Wilcox, moving the pile ahead for four yards down to the 35-yard line. And on the wings that time, Avery Armstrong and Ryan DeLuca, so continuing to see a lot of different guys getting opportunities of this Furman offense. And one of the things we've done, Mercer had 24 plays at the end of the first quarter. They've only run six plays here so far in this second quarter. Fake the pitch to Armstrong going left. Blazowski rolling right, pressure coming. He cuts it back inside and slides for a gain of three down to the 32-yard line. It'll be third down and two. 
One defender came free along the defensive front, and that kept Blazjowski from being able to set up and pick out a target downfield. Yeah, he had Ryan DeLuca running right down the middle of the field and all by himself, but unfortunately Blazjowski couldn't see him because of that rushing three, defender. Three Spotted at 33, so third down and three. Got to get to the 30. And a handoff. We got the first down, crossing the 30 to the 29-yard line. And that's Dirks again. Good conversion there, third and short of getting exactly what we needed to keep the drive going. Well, now with two minutes, we've got two time. Well, I'm sorry, we've got one timeout. Check that we've got all three Fallons of our timeouts. have all three timeouts. Minute 53, minute 52, 7-7 seven, seven ball game here, late first half. Furman at the Mercer 29. Back to the pistol with the backs offset behind him. Dirks and Armstrong. And they'll hand it to Dirks and he'll crash inside the 25 and fall almost all the way down to the 22 yard line. Kyle Williams, the outside linebacker and this continuing to hammer away at their defensive front, starting to pay dividends. Yeah, Dirk's just a shoestring, or a shoe maybe away from breaking that. He got tripped up as he was going through. Second down, a short four. Everything tied in the double wing. Blazowski three-step drop, throwing off to the left, complete to DeLuca, first down inside the 20, and then fireman carry takedown by Cam Lott at the 18-yard line, 17-yard line, and that's good enough to move the chains. Good job by DeLuca of reacting to the football. The throw was a little bit behind him and a little bit away from his momentum, but DeLuca able to control his body, make the reception, and then get upfield for the yardage. 50 seconds. First down, handoff, Wilcox. And no, oh, Blazowski kept it. They go option to Moorhead, and Moorhead gets all the way down inside the five to the one-yard line. Boy, what a ball fake. You had defenders and the play-by-play -play guy all converging on Wilcox, and here comes the Blazer and Moorhead to the right with the option. That's great execution when you can fool the play-by-play -play guy. Well, not necessarily. Handoff, Wilcox stood up at the line, but he got across. Touchdown, Paladins. Just great execution there for Furman for a number of reasons. Obviously, you get the touchdown, but that drive was six minutes and 55 seconds. And what we did was keep the ball out of the Mercer offense, but a great drive there, 14 plays, 80 yards. 29 seconds to go in the half, and Furman gets it to begin the second half, and Atkins' point after is up and good, and the Paladins lead it by a score of 14 to seven. Bring Marcus McMorris into the fray here. Marcus, we just keep pounding it and pounding it and pounding it up the middle and starting to pay dividends, as I said, and then that time, nifty little bit of ball handling by the Blazer. I, I guess it goes with the phrase, something's got to give. They, they're gonna find a way to get that ball uh, established between the tackles, and as you can see, it's starting to work. And Blaze Jousey's a special talent. Uh, he's willing to take the hit there at the end of that play and turn it into a 15-yard uh, gain with a penalty. And his handling the ball, he's always been very dynamic at that as well. Wilcox's second touchdown run is eighth of the season. And go back to the fact that we talked about in the pregame is that we needed to have seven-point seven, seven point plays, not three-point plays, and we were two for two on fourth down. We stopped them on their fourth down play, and then just a great job there in that second quarter of regrouping, particularly after the fourth down stop. We're now time of possession, even with Mercer. Uh, we've run so far now 32 plays to Mercer's 30, and again in the first quarter it was 24-9. And in the second quarter, as Jeremy points out, we completely flipped what happened in the first quarter. Mercer had the ball for 10 minutes plus in the first quarter. In the second quarter, the Paladins 10 minutes and 24 seconds. So just a great job there by the guys up front. And the other thing, as we mentioned in the pregame, Mercer had held opponents to just 65% scoring opportunities in the red zone. They've been there 13 times, given up 11 touchdowns and two uh, field goals. Actually been there 20 times, only scored 13, 11 TDs and two field goals. We've been there twice, 
two touchdowns. And, you know, nothing fancy offensively. Our offensive approach today has not been some wide open, stretch the field kind of thing. We've just been very methodical. So 29 seconds to go in the half. It'll be Hollingsworth to kick it away. Furman did all that without using any of its timeouts. Curtis and Lakes back deep. Curtis had a nice return of 38 yards on the last kick. Hollingsworth's kick this time will send him about six yards deep into the end zone, and he will take a knee. So Mercer, 29 seconds, only one timeout starting at their own 25. You'd think that they would just run the clock out here and try to regroup at halftime, but we'll see. The kicker for Mercer, Cole Fisher, his longest field goal made this year is 34 yards. So with that in mind, you know, Mercer needs about 65 yards in 29 seconds to put him in field goal range. And maybe they'll get greedy here and we can create a turnover, get a little pick. Uh, they're going to send three receivers to the right, one to the left. Riley in the pistol, and they'll just hand off, running straight ahead. Mitchell, 35. 40, cuts it back to the right, look out, 45, midfield into Furman territory, all the way down inside the 30 to the 29 before Darius Curse ran him out of bounds. Yeah, the only thing good about that play is it took 12 seconds, but uh, they were just doing a give up play, but the running back didn't get the message and just kept the play alive. And before we knew it, he was outflanked, he had outflanked us and uh, 46 yards on a run. Now all of a sudden they're thinking we can at least get a field goal here. 17 seconds, ball to Furman 29 yard line. They still have a timeout. Riley, play action, looking to throw, swings it out to the left and he threw it over the head of C.J. Leggett. He was looking for his tight end down the middle of the field. Sam Walker, they hit a big play on that in the first quarter. That time Brian O.K. was right there with him. A good job by our guys of recognizing that formation and recognizing what Mercer wanted to do. And we're now going to go into our sort of pass rush defense here. We're going to leave Jalen Reed in as the uh, pressure along with Washington. The Mercer still has all their plays available to them because they've got that one timeout. 12 seconds. Well, you'd hate to give up any points here. That 46 yard run is puts you in a, a little bit of a jam. Here is a play action again. Riley looking, stepping up. We had him. We lost him. He runs out to the right, and we bring him down inside the 25 at the 24, and timeout called with four seconds to go. Drew Seabrook had him for what would have been the third sack, but could not hang on, and this will give them a chance to line up for a field goal to try and cut this to a four-point lead here in the final four seconds of the half. Just good pressure by Seabrook and then just a great open field tackle by Patrick Wells, redshirt freshman from Franklin, Tennessee. The other thing that that play did, you like to be optimistic, is it put the ball on the right hash, which sort of narrows the angle for a right-footed kicker. Now, Fisher is a junior from Walnut Grove, Georgia, six of nine this year, but as David said, his long 34. This will be a 41 yard attempt. And I would imagine we'll spend a timeout or two before he gets to kick it, would be my guess. Number 98, Cole Fisher. Ball for the, field goal. the angle, as David said, from the far side hash, extreme angle right. So Fisher trying to salvage some points, and before he can, Clay Hendricks calls a timeout. Make him think about it a little bit with three timeouts left. You try to ice him a little bit. But boy, that T. Mitchell run has really changed the, the complexion of the end of this half. It looked like you were going to go in easily at 14 7, and they had conceded by just handing off on first down. but. Mitchell turning in that long run's got them in a position to steal three points here. Yeah, you can see the approach was we were going to just run it and see what happens. And if we had something 
we might we might keep going and unfortunately we just turned him loose and to give the defense credit there on those last two plays of just stiffening forcing this field goal attempt all right let's see if they let him kick it this time from the 31 yard line far side hash snap a little low and dug out kick on the way and it is no good he missed it wide right so the Paladins dodge a bullet and will indeed go into the half with a seven point lead at 14-7 and get the ball to begin the second half of play. Whew. That's the second bullet we dodged in that first half. Clay doing TV with Bryant Lambert filling in for Scott Cole on the television sidelines and as soon as he's done, Marcus McMorris will grab the coach as they walk off. We'll get a couple of thoughts from him and then get you ready for the Ingles halftime report. And here comes Clay to Marcus McMorris right now. Marcus? Coach, we kind of dodged a bullet there at the end of the half. However, we play pretty solid on both sides of the ball. Is just your thought? Yeah, we just, you know, defensively, we, we got to get off the field, you know, and we find it. But we made the big stop on fourth down. Uh, you know, and certainly responded offensively, and then, yeah, we shouldn't have been in that position there. We right. shouldn't have let them down there. But we responded, right. you know, and they're going to make plays, and we're going to make plays, and uh, we get we get the ball here to start the half, and we need another good drive. I think offensively we're doing some pretty good stuff now. Uh, it's going to be a hard yard kind of game, so we're going to have to make them. Hey, making a few guts and calls there, but it's paying off for us. See you next half. Thank you. All right, Marcus, thank you very much. We have reached halftime. Furman on top, 14-7 here on Homecoming 2017. Stay tuned, the Ingalls Halftime Show is coming up next, right here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. It's time for the bright lights of football season. Time for the hard-hitting, quick-cutting, play-making moments that keep us on the edge of our seats. As the hometown heroes continue their quest for gridiron glory. This year, Ingalls is sponsoring more than the tailgate. Something to turn this year. We came to they play. are going to line up Ingles, the with Riley under center, Leggett in the backfield, two receivers to the right, everything else tight. Can party hardy at your Offset next eye behind the quarterback, a fourth down and a little ABC less than a full yard. ABC Riley will take it. We stood him up, we hit him, we drove him back, and he did not get it. Furman holds, turnover on downs, Paladin football. Yeah, just a great job up front, Jalen Reed. Jonah Tibbs, a lot of penetration. He started up front with a pass protection because Blayton Gaskin. There's a reason why year after year more people trust Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, C. Dan Warner Realtors, to get the job done. Complete in the Mercer territory. With the utmost integrity, quality, and professionalism. Right we love what we do, and it shows in every transaction. We've been the undisputed upstate Mark Dirk sound 20 years because we do Will what's right. In. We handle every transaction with a smile, and we're committed to making it. And now the Powell is going to go for it on fourth down, a little more than a yard. Ever. Quick pitch on the option. Wilcox dropped it. He bounced it to himself, picked it up, and he got to the pylon near side touchdown. Here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. It's the Ingalls Halftime Show, featuring scores, highlights, stats, and a recap of today's first half. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. Now, let's go back to the stadium. Furman leads at 14-7 as we welcome you to the Ingalls Halftime Show. Dan Scott here in the booth. It's been a good first half of action, and we'll see if the Paladins can maintain the momentum in the second half. Taking a look at some of the numbers here. First downs, Furman with 12, Mercer with 10. And remember, Mercer dominated the first quarter. The first downs, in fact, at that time, after one quarter, nine to one in favor of the Bears. They only got one first down in the first quarter while the Paladins got 11. 
rushing yardage, 19 carries, 107 yards for Mercer. And, of course, 46 of them came right there at the end of the half on the carry by T. Mitchell. Furman, 24 carries, 99 yards. They continue to pound it right at the uh, interior of Mercer's defensive front. Passing yards, 117 on 10 of 14 for Kalen Riley. He's been sacked twice. P.J. Blazjowski, 7 out of 8, 59 yards. He has not been sacked. Rushing Mitchell for them, 8 carries, 74 yards, and a touchdown. Keelan Dirks, 11 carries, 35 yards. Moorhead, 3 carries, 33 yards. Wilcox, 8 for 32. Uh, and two touchdowns, 8 for 31 and two touchdowns. Receiving Curtis, five catches, 58 yards for the Bears. Walker, three for 52. For the Paladins, Gordon and Moorhead with two catches each, 17 and 11 yards, respectively. Uh, some of the other numbers. Possession time, Mercer, 1439. Furman, 1521. Third down conversions. Bears were two out of five. Furman, three of seven on fourth down. Mercer, 0 for 1. Furman, 2 for 2 and both teams perfect in the red zone. Mercer once, Furman twice. And defensive numbers, Lee Bennett, nine tackles, one solo, eight assists to lead Mercer for the Paladins. Brian O.K., seven, two solo, five assists. Washington, McCoy, and Reed each with five. Those are some of the numbers. Paladins lead at 14-7. We'll have some highlights in the scoring summary coming up in just a bit, but first, a break, and when we come back, we'll have the South Carolina Department of Agriculture Homegrown Athlete of the Week. That's coming up next here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. It's time for the bright lights of football season. Time for the hard-hitting, quick-cutting, playmaking moments that keep us on the edge of our seats. As the hometown heroes continue their quest for gridiron glory. This year, Ingles is sponsoring more than the tailgate. This year, we came to play. Ingles, the official sponsor of Furman Football. Hey, it's me, Kim, the matchmaker. The Carolina Ford dealers want to match one lucky person with $30,000 towards a new Ford Fusion or Escape. Just enter the perfect match giveaway at FordPerfectMatch.com for your chance to drive home in a brand new Ford. No purchase or payment necessary to enter to win. Must be at least 18 years or old with a valid driver's license. Sweepstakes begin 6-30-17 and ends 4-30-18. Vorder prohibited. See official rules at FordPerfectMatch.com slash rules.aspx for prize descriptions, odds, and full entry details. Palmetto Pride, your anti-litter and beautification organization, has been helping keep South Carolina beautiful for nearly 15 years. Our volunteers picked up 7,395,000 pounds of trash in the past year. Do your part to keep South Carolina beautiful and don't litter. If you see someone littering, call the Litter Buster Hotline, 1-877-725-7733, or try our new Trash Tracker app. Remember, litter trashes everyone. The South Carolina Department of Agriculture presents Furman's Homegrown Player of the Week. Discover more about today's homegrown paladin now as the Ingalls Halftime Show continues. Our homegrown athlete this week is senior Brittany Houston. She's a shortstop on Kyle Jamison's paladin softball team. And I, I guess first things first, besides thank you for joining us, I would imagine that... Uh, the college career has gone by pretty quickly. Here you are as a senior, right? Yes, it's going by so fast. It feels like just yesterday I was a freshman here, but uh, people say like it goes by in the, in the blink of an eye, and it really does. Like I can't believe I'm already a senior. You find yourself now that you're a, a senior, and even last year as a junior, once you got to be an upperclassman in more of a leadership role on the team. Yes. Um, so my freshman year, we had a we had a really good senior class that. Um, I became really close with that were good leaders and they helped show us like what a leader was like and even last year I felt like our my senior class specifically is very is a very like key part of this program and I feel like we've just developed into being leaders for this team. What made you going back a ways uh, because you were a star at Palmetto High School uh, what, what made you decide to come to Furman? 
um, kind of wanted to stay close to home, and it was like the perfect situation where I was close enough that I could go home if I wanted to, but far enough away when I wanted to get away. And also, I just love the academics here, and I knew I wanted to do something medical-wise after school, so I knew this is a good school for academics. And then for softball, I really love the coaches and love the campus, and I just fell in love with it when I came to visit. Do you have much of a memory of what it's like to play a game without Emma Ogburn? Because you two played together in high school, and now you're playing here at Furman. No, not really. We played high school together and travel ball together, and since we're like 10 and under, so I really don't remember playing without her. It's got to be comforting, though, to, to know you've had somebody that you've been uh, friends and teammates with that long make that same step with you when you were a freshman. Yeah, it was very comforting, especially me. I'm kind of a shy person, so coming in freshman year, it was like comforting being able to do all the freshman stuff together, like orientation and knowing that you had somebody there that you already knew coming in with you. So how do you take being a shy person and, and put that into what it takes to be a leader? Um, some would say like there's different parts of being a leader and I think my role as being a leader on the team is just leading by example and people following me that way but also I feel like since four years ago from a freshman to a senior I feel like I've came out of my shyness a little bit and started taking on more of a leadership role. Well, the softball program here under Coach Jamison has has been steadily improving. Won a regular season championship last year. I know the tournament didn't go the way you'd hope, but but uh, this is a, an established program now. What's the outlook for this coming spring? Uh, well, we look to win SoCon this year. Hopefully, um, we have a lot of. Like I said, our senior class is very crucial, and we have a lot of people coming back this year, and I think we can do it this year if we just continue to work hard. All right, now what's more difficult, Furman class work or working with Hunter Reed and Jordan Caskey doing defensive stats on football game days? Uh, I would have to say Furman class work. <laughs> um, working with them, it's it's been fun. It's been uh it's been, been a good getaway from classwork, but it's nice to be able to come do that and be involved with all the sports at Furman. So once the uh, collegiate career is over, what's the plan? I uh, plan to hopefully go to pharmacy school and become a pharmacist. And um, I don't know, hopefully I want to try and go to MUSC in Charleston for pharmacy school. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> All right, so as I do with uh, every one of the homegrown athletes I talk with, um, I try to, to let people know a little bit about who you are away from Furman. So when you go back home to Williamson, what's your go-to restaurant? What's the one place you have to eat at? Uh, well, considering there's not many restaurants in Williamson, uh, I probably have to say the clock. Every time I go home, I have to go by and get a meal there before I come back to school. So what's your favorite meal there? A uh, bird dog plate. Not many people know what a bird dog is, but it's a hot dog bun with chicken, bacon, cheese, and honey mustard, and I love it there. You know, Jake Crawford from the baseball team was our interview last week, and his favorite food, go-to food, was a bird dog. And it's amazing, back-to-back -back weeks. All right, uh, last three songs or artists you've listened to in your iPod? Uh, probably Thomas Rex's new album, um, Life Changes. There's I've, all the new songs of his I've been listening to. Well, listen, thank you for spending some time with us, and uh, good luck on this upcoming senior season. Thanks for having me. That is Brittany Houston. She is a senior shortstop on the Furman softball team, and she's this week's homegrown athlete, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Stay tuned. Halftime continues after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Good taste. It starts at the beginning. And when you take what was started right here in South Carolina and keep it here, we promise Trey, I'm going to try to get the these highlights in quickly and get to that last break, but if I don't, just taste better. we'll move it again, okay? All right, sounds good. Be sure to enjoy the best the season has to offer. Choose certified South Carolina-grown produce and products. It's a matter of taste. Tailgating is a song heard across campuses, parking lots, and open fields where all you need is a Bojangles Big Bow Box and a love for the game. So bring your chicken, your biscuits, your fixins, and your tea. Because game day doesn't begin with a whistle. It begins with a Bojangles tailgate. 
Every tailgate starts with Bojangles. Grab an 8, 12, or 20-piece tailgate special. Bojangles, it's bow time. There's still a buzz on the streets of Greenville, South Carolina. A lingering excitement for the best hotel at the heart of downtown. That special feeling you'll discover within the courtyard by Marriott Malls reflects what you experience very beautifully in a downtown area. Contemporary decor with modern architecture blends seamlessly with Marriott Courtyards, signature hospitality, and dedication to excellence. Plan your next day in the courtyard by Marriott Greenville downtown. Visit MarriottCourtyardGreenville.com for more information. Courtyard by Marriott downtown. Only in Greenville. Dan Scott back with you as the Ingles halftime continues. 14-7, Paladins lead it. Fell behind 7-0 early as Mercer on its second possession drove 91 yards in six minutes and six seconds, 15 plays. Got a T. Mitchell one-yard touchdown run. Looked like they were maybe going to go up 14-0, but Furman with its back to the wall in its own territory, deep in its own territory, down near the red zone, as a matter of fact, at the 22. On a fourth down and less than a yard, Mercer went for it, and the defense had an answer. They are going to line up with Riley under center, Leggett in the backfield, two receivers to the right, everything else tight. Offset eye behind the quarterback on fourth down and a little less than a full yard, and Riley will take it. We stood him up, we hit him, we drove him back, and he did not get it. Furman holds, turnover on downs, Paladin football. And that would start a pretty significant turnaround in the momentum of this game. The Paladins would drive nine plays, 77 yards in four minutes and 12 seconds to tie the game, but to do it, had to convert a fourth down of their own, and it was fourth down and two from the six-yard line. They decided to go for it in the red zone, gambled a little bit, and it paid off, but not without a little bit of drama. And now the Powell is gonna go for it on fourth down, a little more than a yard. Quick pitch on the option. Wilcox dropped it. He bounced it to himself. Picked it up and he got to the pylon, near side, touchdown Paladins. Exactly how you draw it up. The one hop bounce, fortunately for us, right up to Wilcox. Whew. That tied the game at seven after the Atkins point after Wilcox would add another short touchdown run late in the first half with 29 seconds to go to make it 14-7. And then Furman had to hold on to dodge a last second field goal opportunity by the Bears to keep it at 14-7 and that's where we are right now at the end of the first half. That's the Ingles Halftime Show. Stay tuned, the second half is coming up next. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Last year, lottery players took home more than $924 million, but they weren't the only winners. Since the lottery launched in 2002, more than 1.4 million scholarships have been awarded to South Carolina students, and millions have gone to support K-12 and community education programs. So when you play the South Carolina Education Lottery, you're not just taking a chance, you're also giving one. For more information, visit sceducationlottery.com. Hi, Furman fans. Dan Scott here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. Roos, handcrafted food and drinks with its casually elegant aesthetic and rustic modern design. Roos offers an innovative menu of soil to city cuisine with an urban twist. Enhance your dining experience with handcrafted cocktails, world wines, beer and premium spirits. Roos Restaurant located in the exciting and vibrant community of Noma Square on Main Street in downtown Greenville. Come see us today. Roos is a very proud sponsor of the Furman Paladin. Some noise if you want a, a Kickstarter t-shirt provided by today's big sponsor, 
All right, second half about to get underway. The Paladins will get the ball first. And David Cobb, we had, except for that little hiccup right at the end, which didn't cost us any points, had all the momentum in the second quarter. You'd like to see that carry over. Yeah, obviously the most important drive of the uh, of the afternoon is going to come up when we get the ball. And, uh, you know, it's disappointing to see the Furman student section, obviously thinking that it's the game is over. But, uh, oh, one of these days. But, uh, you know, just a great job there in the second quarter by our guys. It all started with that fourth down stop. And, uh, you know, we've got to take that momentum coming out of the locker room here. Let's get another drive. Let's get whether it's short drive, whether it's a long drive, just score a touchdown. And let's go up two scores and, and put some heat on the freshman quarterback for Mercer. So it'll be Cole Fisher to kick it away. Thomas Gordon and Cam Burnett back deep to receive. And we are ready to go. Good to have you with us here, regardless of where you may be and on what platform you've got us dialed in on. Kick will drive Gordon about five yards deep back into the end zone. He'll take a knee, and that is the first touchback of the season for Cole Fisher. A little broadcaster jinx, maybe? So the Paladins will take it first and 10 at their own 25, leading 14-7. As Jeremy points out, the, even the kid who gets the tee was not expecting that because as he goes out to get the tee, does a little slide. He was so excited. Furman going left to right. Field house in toward the scoreboard. Near side hash. Receiver to each side in the pistol set. Two backs, offset, handoff straight ahead. Dirks Ooh. fumbles the football. And Mercer recovers it at the 30-yard line. Eric Jackson, the strong safety, fell on it. And, oh, my goodness, that is not the way you wanted to start this second half. Yeah, he just literally coughed that one up because not really a, a hard hit. He's going straight ahead, and the tackler gets his helmet a little bit on the football. That's Con Conway, the uh, linebacker. Thanks, Jeremy. But, uh, oh, you just hate to give that one up. That is their... 17th takeaway of the season. Well, we just gave them that one. They didn't really take that one away. And now Kalen Riley in the pistol with Mitchell behind him. Right to left, dropping to throw. Looking, looking, pressure coming, and we hit him and we got it. Third sack of the game all the way back at the 40-yard line. You know, a lot of times you say it starts up front with the pressure, but that time it started in the back with the coverage. Lemmings, Kearse, OK, Farrar, everybody in coverage, everybody had their guy stuck, and the surge just eventually got to him. And a great job by our defense of responding after the turnover. Chris Washington was the one who got him. Mark it officially at the 39. Second down and 19. Three receivers right, one left. Handoff, Mitchell has a little bit of a crease, but not much as he's hit. Dropped right at the 35-yard line by Brian O.K. He got four yards back. And now you're looking at third down and 15. That's a play Marcus McMorris would be proud of because O.K. just stood in there like a middle linebacker, one-on-one, -on -one, and makes the play. Third down, 15. They'll again go three receivers right, one left. Very reminiscent of our favorite billboard in Newberry, right? Ball near side hash. Going right to left are the Bears. Snap to Riley. Dropping to throw. Pressure coming. He steps up through it. Rolling to his right. Throwing on the run. Has Curtis open in the middle of the field at the 15. Turns it up inside the 10 to the 9. And Raynard Ellis finally stopped him. And that is a big play on third down and 15. It's first and goal Bears. And just give... Give him credit. Riley created the time by just moving up into the pocket and scrambling a little bit to his right, and uh, we just turned somebody loose in the secondary. 
Again, that's a second or third big third down conversion for Mercer today. From the nine, first and goal, far side hash. And they hand it, and there's a big hole running right, and Mitchell gets inside the five all the way down to the two. Dylan Van finally stopped him, second down and goal. Second and goal for the one. Actually going to give him the one-yard line. C.J. Leggett will check into the backfield now. They'll stay in the pistol. Turnover on the first play of the second half. A Dirks fumble gave it to him at the 30. And now they're trying to cash in. Hand it to Leggett, and he is in easily for the touchdown. Number seven, C.J. Leggett in for the Bears. Yeah, the game has ebbs and flows, and... Uh, Pretty easy here the way this third quarter started is just not how you drew it up. And again, Jalen Reed, after the play, kind of banged up a little bit with his shoulder. Number 98, Cole Fisher, home for the PAT. Score comes at the 12-33 mark. And now Fisher to try and tie this game. He has missed two point afters on the season. And he got that one, so we're tied at 14 all with 12.33 to go. And as the defense came off the field, you had Chad Staggs talking with A.K. Elisanya and also as he comes off the field having a discussion with Raynard Ellis. But uh, when you got that third and long situation, that's the second time today Mercer's converted on third and long, but particularly here. Yeah, we got pressure on him, but he's able to keep the play alive and then just could not keep containment on Curtis. Media timeout. We will take the break with them. Tied at 14. You are listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hi, Furman fans. Dan Scott here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. Five plays, 30 yards, and 221 after the turnover. That was Mercer's scoring drive. Leg at the one-yard touchdown run to tie the game at 14. Dan Scott, David Cobb, Jeremy and Arnett upstairs. Marcus McMorris on the sidelines. And Marcus, it'll be very interesting to see how our offense responds after that turnover led to points. Uh, they have to respond. They don't have a choice. We give the ball right back to this uh, Mercer offense. And that, that's not good news. So they're going to have to respond and uh, knuckle up and get the job done. So Fisher set to kick it off again for the second time in a matter of minutes. You know, that fumble is just sort of like one of those tennis things that they call unforced errors. It wasn't anything special that Mercer did. It wasn't a violent hit. And we just literally just laid it on the ground. And Dirks is not that kind of football player, but that's what he did on that play. Kick, he mishit that one. It's fielded on a hop at the 10 yard line by Gordon near side, 20, 25, spinning, and he's out of bounds right there. Thomas Gordon with the return. So the Paladins will take over Second first and 10 five, officially, eight, it looks 20. like, at the 26. You know, how does a guy who kicks off the first one of that half and puts it about right. halfway past the F? in the end zone come back and literally hit sort of one of my drives. They spot it right at the 25 yard line. So it's Wilcox and Moorhead who will be behind Blaze Jowski in the pistol. Near side hash going left to right in a 14-14 game. Early third quarter. And the Blazer handoff to Wilcox runs through a tackle 30. 
35, still on his feet as he spins across the 40 and actually dropped right at the 40 yard line. Malik Fleming, the free safety, brought him down with a 15 yard run by Wilcox. And the Paladins get the first down. Match middle that time in the center took two guys. To the eye, they hand it to Wilcox, the fullback again. He will get three yards to the 43, Lee Bennett, his 10th tackle of this game, brought him down. You know, one of the interesting things, uh, Clanders talking about being balanced offensively. We've run 36 plays now offensively, and we've thrown eight passes, so we are, we are run heavy today. Second down and seven, Blazjowski in the pistol, double wing set, one wide out, play action. Rolling, pressure coming, gets rid of it, and it's out of bounds. Shumpert trying to walk that tightrope inside the Mercer 45, but could not stay in. It'll be third down. Yeah, Blaze Jasky just trying to keep the play alive, and unfortunately his momentum going toward our sideline. And as a result, the throw drifted toward our sideline too, and uh, Shepard had no chance to make the play. Only a inbounds. second incompletion, though. Seven out of nine now, but here you go. Third down and seven. Need to convert this one. Double wing again out of the pistol. Here comes pressure. They pick it up, throw right side, and he misfired. Had a man wide open at the 48-yard line. That was Gordon, and he threw it too wide, incomplete, and we let a Big, big opportunity go by right there, fourth down. Yeah, had Gordon on just a simple hookup, had a good pocket. Blaze Jowski threw a strike. Unfortunately, a couple of inches off the plate. Gordon not able to make the catch. Curtis standing at his own 15-yard line, waiting the punt from Hollingsworth. So Mercer's offense will get it right back. It's 14-all game. Hollingsworth rugby style kick as he runs off to the right, spins to Curtis at the 15, to the 20, and caught from behind at the 25 to 26 yard line. And that's where Mercer will take over first and 10. Media timeout, 11-18 to go third quarter, and we are all tied up at 14. Mercer's offense about ready to go back on the attack. And we'll see what the Paladins defense can do with them. When we come back, you're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hey, it's me, Kim, the matchmaker. The Carolina Ford dealers want to match one lucky person with $30,000 towards a new Ford Fusion or Escape. Just enter the perfect match giveaway at FordPerfectMatch.com for your chance to drive home in a brand new Ford. No purchase or payment necessary to enter to win. Must be at least 18 years or old with a valid driver's license. Sweepstakes begin 6-30-17 and ends 4-30-18. Ford prohibited. See official rules at FordPerfectMatch.com slash rules.aspx for price descriptions, odds, and full entry details. At Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza isn't just a slogan. It's a job. Seriously, a real job. Our chief ingredient officer makes sure we have the best ingredients every day for better pizza. Like our Philly cheesesteak and new chicken Philly pizzas made with hand-cut green peppers and onions on pan or large crust for just $11 each. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Limited time offer, not valid with any of the coupons or discounts. Prices, participation, delivery, area charges, and additional times and taxes extra. It's the Southern Fried Cotton Tailgate Show. Each week, one hour before kickoff on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Now Mercer about to take over first and 10 at its own 26 yard line following the punt by Hollingsworth. 42 yards on the kick and 11 yards on the return. Sorry about that, Dan, but as you know, as you would expect, you can get some pretty good information from the statistics. Mercer, three of six on third down, but each of those three conversions have been pretty big plays. Mercer getting about 13 yards of completion in their passing game. All right, here we go. After the timeout, going from right to left. Mitchell brings his offense out, near side hash. Three receivers to the far side, one here nearest us. 
Mitchell to his right in the pistol. And a handoff to Mitchell coming left side. Found just a slightest bit of a crease. Was able to get two, maybe three yards up to the 29-yard line. Elijah McCoy stopped him. He had a good job there by Chris Washington, the bandit on the right side there, just able to keep contained and keep that leverage not allowing the running back to get outside of him, so he had to turn it back inside, and that's where all the help was. Second down and seven. Tell you what, it's getting brutal even up here in the booth. Here is a play action. Swing pass to the right side to Leggett. He's got some room, 30, 35, out of bounds, far side. But a first down before Raynard Ellis could finally run him out of bounds. Yeah, good coverage downfield. Ellis just a little bit late and getting out to the back, coming out of the backfield on the little swing route. First down, Mercer at the 39. Ten-yard gain to the 39. 10-33 clock running. Third quarter, 14-14 score. Mercer. First down. Handoff to Leggett running right, and Jalen Reed wrapped that play up just about at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they'll give him a yard to the 40. It'll be second down and nine. Great penetration in pursuit by Jalen Reed. A little bit of a stretch play to the Mercer sideline, and Reed, who was lined up in the gap between the left guard and center, able to get through that gap and uh, make the play. Got him in second and long, though. Empty the backfield. Three receivers here to the near side. That's wide. Two to the far side. And Reed takes a snap, looking to the far side. Pressure coming. Steps out of it. Throws downfield. And a one-handed grab. Is that going to be a catch? It is inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. Marquis Irvin negotiating the sideline. Reeled it in with one hand. A circus catch at the Furman 38 is where they're going to put it down. And Riley just sort of slung that one and threw it up. And Boy, what a catch. A, that's an incomplete pass, too. <laughs> First down, handoff. Mitchell coming left to the wide side. Run out of bounds at the 30, but that was good enough to pick up eight yards. Brian O'Kay on the stop. We have a flag down, though, so hold everything, literally. No, no pun intended. Our referee is Larry Adcock. They got the left tackle, Thomas Marchman. And that penalty flag is going to be about a 15-yard penalty because instead of it being second and about three, it's going to be first and 17. Takes it all the way back to the Furman 45. 9.20 as they rewind the clock. 14-14 score. Homecoming 2017. Two receivers to the right. Now they're going to motion and pitch it forward to Curtis on that speed sweep. And this time we're able to hold him to a three-yard gain after the first two times they did it. He was able to pick up big yardage. Brian O'K ran him out at the 42. Also Elijah McCoy that time right at the point of contact. Just inches away from making the play, but just a good battle there by McCoy. Second and 14. Bring Leggett off the slot into the backfield, and they'll hand it to him running straight ahead. Inside the 40, spinning, still on his feet. 35, and down to the 34-yard line. Ellison okay. Finally stopped him. He was able to... Drag tacklers for another two, maybe three yards, and make this a third down and seven coming up. And Chris Washington coming off the field, limping off the field there, going to get some attention. Dylan Van in for him. This is a huge third down play, huge third down play, probably a four down play, a four down uh, situation for Mercer if they can get yards here on third down. Two receivers each side on third down and almost a full seven yards. Play action, quick throw off to the left, complete. And that's going to be a first down catch made by Marquise Irvin, and he's dropped right at the 25-yard line, a gain of nine. Yeah, just a quick throw, a little bit too much cushion there. 
And again, Mercer with a big completion on third down for the uh, conversion. Four out of seven they are now on third downs. 7.35, 7.34, clock running midway through the third quarter in a 14-14 game. Play action, Riley looking to throw in the middle. No, nope, throwing to the corner. Down the uh, near sideline, touchdown, Marquis Irvin. He had Sam Walker open down the seam and instead came back to Irvin near side. He beat Curse and Mercer has jumped back out on top, 20 to 14. Yeah, we got held twice, both Jalen Reed and Chinadu Aconia, but uh, we turned him loose down the sideline for the touchdown. So Fisher on for the point after to try to make it a seven point. Mercer lead, score coming at 7.24 to go. The extra point and the point after is good and Furman for the second time in the game trails by seven. 21 to 14, and hang on, we got flags down. Some dead ball nonsense. Not for uh, Konya. Jeremy, Jeremy, I'm sorry, David. Jeremy says it's going to be on Furman. Yeah, Konya involved in that because that's who Clay Hendricks was talking to coming off the field. After the well, they pointed at Mercer, but they did call it on Chinadu Aconia, and the 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. 7.24 to go. Furman down 21-14 and a timeout on the field. We'll be back after you hear this from Pepsi. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Holding number 79, defense, first day. I'm also holding a party tonight. Great call by the official. <laughs> Looks like we've got another flag on the field. Holding a Pepsi. For more information on the Children's Museum of Necessary refreshment. Hey, Ted, bring some of that Pepsi to my party. Pepsi and the NFL. Welcome to the Fun Doesn't End Zone. If you've been sidelined with an injury, sore joint, or back pain, the experts of Piedmont Orthopedic Associates can offer you both surgical and non-surgical care to get you moving again. Piedmont Orthopedic Associates' 15 surgeons and two spine physicians are all board certified and are committed to providing you with excellent orthopedic care. Visit us online at GetMovingWithPOA.com. Mercer's scoring drive. Well, it's not on the screen because of the penalty at the end of the play, but it was 74 yards. Nine plays. Nine plays, score comes with 7.24 to go. And the half, or in the third quarter rather, in Furman, now trailing 21 to 14. They trailed 7-0 out of the gate, scored 14 straight. And this half began with Furman turning it over on its first play, allowing Mercer a short field, 30-yard drive to tie it. And then the last offense possession, Blazjowski missed a wide open Gordon in Mercer territory on third down that would have kept the drive alive. We punted and instead of possibly retaking the lead, Mercer ended up scoring. Ridge Gibson takes a short kick, returns it up across the 20 yard line. A flag comes flying in from way behind the play. My friends are uh, starting to get me a little boiling because there's no way there can be a penalty on that because it was just a lob kick to the 10 yard line and it we just ran forward 10 yards. Well, they they called one, and they called it on Christian Noble. 
redshirt junior on special teams. So that'll take it back to the 11-yard line. And it'll be Furman ball first and 10, trailing for the second time today by a touchdown. All right, offense has got to create some momentum here. We've been pretty stagnant here in this third quarter. And again, what's frustrating is, is that Mercer hadn't stopped us. We've just stopped ourselves in our two possessions. I'll go to the eye at the near side hash. Plays Jowski under center. And a handoff to Wilcox. Ran through the first contact and got up to the 15-yard line for a gain of four. And you can tell there's two offensive touchdowns has energized this Mercer defense a little more active, a little more chippiness. Second down and six. Back to the pistol with the backs behind Blazjowski. A receiver split wide to each side. And the Blazer option. Now, well, it looked like he was going to try to back out of it, but he just really had no place to go. Ends up getting swarmed under for a loss. Back to about the 12-yard line. Destin Guillen, the backup defensive end on the right side, got the tackle. Yeah, that was going to be a lead option, and it turned in more to a quarterback sweep, and Mercer had that well defended. Nowhere for Blaze Jowski to go except just eat it. All of a sudden, now you've got a third down and eight. Back at just shy, almost third down and nine, at just nosing across the 12. Plays are in the pistol, two receivers to each side. Motion Moorhead from left to right off the slot, and Blazjowski dropping to throw. Has time now. The pocket breaks down. Dumps it off to Wilcox. 20, 25, first down, 30. And Wilcox runs it up to about the 33-yard line. Good recognition by Blazjowski. Just dumped it off to the right with the pressure coming. And by the time Brandon Coney ran down Wilcox, he had gotten... 21 yards up to the 33. Yeah, that's a great third down conversion. It started Reed Krober, picks up the blitz. Blazjowski steps up from the pressure and then recognizes he's got Wilcox as an outlet guy, and Wilcox gets the first down. Just great conversion there. Kind of a momentum building play. We'll go back to the eye on first down, and they hand it to Keelan Dirks, and he runs right into Blazjowski tripped him. Yeah. And he's dropped for a loss of a yard. And he ran right into the back of Matt Schmidt, too. And, you know, we've run the ball between the tackles on first down, I think, every series, every first down pretty much today. Second and 11, 450. Clock running, third quarter. Paladins down 21-14. Blazjowski. Handoff again, Dirks, and he'll get the yard back plus a couple up to the 34. Isaiah Bueller brought him down. And it looks like, too, a lot of times if we just pull it and run the option, we can make yards on that play. We had Moorhead and Blazjowski going to the left after the handoff, and uh, not anybody from Mercer within 10 yards of him. Third down and nine again. At the 34-yard line, Blazjowski in the pistol. Two receivers to the left, one right. Blazer dropping to throw. Pressure coming. He gets rid of it right here at the near sideline. Caught by DeLuca. First down at the 45-yard line. Lee Bennett ran him out, but that was a rope fired by Blazjowski right on target. Yeah, just a great throw by Blazjowski. Again, great pass protection up front. Blazjowski with time to throw on the out route to DeLuca. And the true freshman, walk-on freshman, with a big third down catch. Wilcox and Avery Armstrong in the backfield behind Blazjowski in the pistol handoff to Wilcox. Started straight ahead, kind of angled to the left, and he'll get three yards up to the 47-yard line before he's stopped. Tanner Brumby made the stop for Mercer. Second down and seven. Back to the eye and Blazjowski three-step drop. Quick throw off to the right, complete across midfield. That was Gordon making the catch. Stephen Huza brought him down 
as he got to the 48-yard line. That'll leave him three yards shy of the first down. And I would imagine this is also going to be a four-down territory for us and if we need it, but uh, let's go ahead and get this third-down conversion. Will Cox and Gibson behind Blazjowski in the eye on third down and three. Near side hash. Handoff, Wilcox, and he's not going to get there. He's going to be a yard shy, maybe two. Yeah, we had a little isolation play. We pulled Bush, and unfortunately for us, just late getting there, and there was a gap between Bush as the lead blocker and Wilcox as the running back, and that's where the uh, defense for Mercer came in and collapsed the play, but I would assume here we're going to go for it. Fourth down and two. The Paladins two for two on fourth down today. And this is a big one. Down 21-14. They'll go to the pistol with two backs behind Blazjowski. Six on the play clock. Blazjowski takes the snap. They go option. He'll keep it. He's got the first down. Running left, cross the 45 to the 44. He needed three. He got four. And We'll move the chains one more time. Great recognition by Blaze Jaskier of where he was on the field and what he needed to get for the first down. But again, it looks like we've got some room to move on the option game outside the tackles. We have not thrown the ball on first down yet, as you mentioned a moment ago. Let's see if maybe now's the time. Here is a toss on first down, and it's going to be a flea flicker. and We've got a receiver wide open, and the ball is underthrown, but there's a pass interference penalty. We also dodged a bullet, too, because we should have been called for illegal motion because we were still going down when we had the uh, wing back going in motion, but we got away with that, and we're going to get 15 on the interference penalty. And with the, the pass was actually thrown to the receiver who was covered. There was a second receiver thrown, and this is Armstrong who let it fly. Had Thomas Gordon wide open. And Avery Armstrong is a high school quarterback and uh, just picked the wrong receiver and underthrew that one. But uh, we're fortunate to get the penalty. Takes it down to the 29. First and 10. Stay in the eye. Play action. Blazer throws. Right side complete. Sliding catch by Gordon inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. That's a first down. He caught it in front of Stephen Huza. Yeah, I like the aggressiveness here. We've consecutive first down plays of coming out and going vertical. Mark it at the 19, a gain of 10. 126, 125 to go third quarter. Powell is down 21-14 in the red zone again. Handoff Dirks running left, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for a yard. LaMarcus Bailey, the outside linebacker, brought him down. Second and nine at the 18. Furman's been in the red zone twice, two touchdowns. Go under a minute to go third quarter. Looking for a score that would tie this game. Second and nine from the Bear, 18. Go back to the pistol, Dirks to the left of Blazjowski. Motion by Moorhead, play action, dropping out of the, the option, throw right down the middle, Andy Shumpert caught it, touchdown. They brought Moorhead in motion, faked it to Dirks, looked like they were going to run the option. Blazer dropped out of it, and Shumpert running wide open down the middle of the field. Easy pitch and catch for the score, and it comes with 40 seconds to go. Yeah, just great job by Shumpert of getting behind everybody, then Blazjowski putting it right on the money. Shumpert with a touchdown, but just a great drive there by our offensive. And the extra point is up and good, and we are tied at 21 with that 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Nice response by the Furman offense. Let's keep it here. Let's bring Marcus McMorris back in with us. Uh, needed to get the momentum back. A couple of big third downs and a fourth down conversion there, Marcus. That was a good drive. Definitely, and we're persistent on uh, establishing the run and continuing to run the ball. But uh, we also took some aggressive targets downfield on that drive and uh, just made some plays downfield as well. But we, it's clear that we want to establish the run and stick with it and not let it go. But uh, those passes downfield, I think, were key to uh, the score on this drive. We have, at the moment, 
132 rushing yards. Blaze Jowski now 12 of 15, 123 yards and a touchdown. It's been very interesting. I don't want to call the offense vanilla or bland today, David. It's, it's been more, they've been intent. We've seen the eye well more than we've seen it all year. Here's the kick by Blaze Jowski. Short, Curtis will come up and take it at the 10. 15, 20, angling to the middle of the field. 25, 30, look out, 35. And out to the 38, almost the 39 yard line. Another good return by Chandler Curtis. But finally on that drive, late in the drive, get a little creative on first down a couple of times. Yeah, we've been determined to establish the running game between the tackles today. And, uh, you know, we've had success. Wilcox with 57 yards, Dirks with 42 yards, but they've all been pretty much short gains. The longest run we've had so far today is 17 yards from Moorhead and 15 yards from Wilcox. They'll start this drive at their own 39 right to left here late in the third quarter. Empty backfield, quick throw off to the left to the wide side. It's complete and up across the 40 Pass complete to, number 80. to the 43. Renard Ellis on the tackle. Great technique there by Joe Farrar. He does not make the tackle, but Farrar had the, the leverage and would not let the receiver get outside of him down our sideline, and Farrar is the wall that forces everything back in. Tucker Cannon made the catch, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Well, we thought this was going to be a good one. We have not been disappointed. We've got 15 minutes of football left, and right now nothing has been decided. Furman 21, Mercer 21. Fourth quarter about to unfold, and you'll hear it after this from Christopher Trucks on the Furman IMG Sports the Network. Furman University Student Activities Board would like to congratulate all of this year's Havoc participants. Winning tradition that defines Furman College football Christopher Trucks. I'm Clay Hendricks, head football coach for the Pirates. Winning upstate businesses allow us to trucks to get back to the and they help our football program by providing us with the truck we receive to move us from game to game. For 60 years, Christopher Trucks has set the standard. Join with them in support of Furman Pirates football this season as we wrap up our home season over the 11th with the Citadel. At short fields, we say food is our game, and why not? Burgers, wings, steak, sandwiches, salads, and even gluten free our menu is something for everyone. You can enjoy Shortfield's menu with inside or outside seating. On Saturday, catch the best of college football, and on Sundays, watch your favorite NFL team with the NFL package. Shortfield's is open for dinner on Monday and lunch and dinner the rest of the week. Catering and group meals are available as well. Don't forget to check out the new location in Simpsonville. Shortfield's at Downtown Traveler's Rest, where food is our game. Along with David Cobb, Marcus McMorris, I'm Dan Scott, Jeremy Arnett is our spotter and also has a look at what else is going on around the Southern Conference right now and a couple of very interesting scores, Jeremy. Yeah, halfway through the third, Western Carolina 16-7 over VMI. Samford up 14-7 halfway through the third over Wofford and Chattanooga up 14-7 over the Citadel just started the second half. Thank you, sir. Top 25 scores of note. Final, Wisconsin over Maryland, 38-13. It's a final down in Texas. Oklahoma State and Texas, 13-10. Oklahoma State wins it in overtime. Well, I thought there would be a lot more points scored in that game. I thought that would be the score after about halfway through the first quarter. Yeah. But on the plus side, that's another game that I picked correctly that Forrest Stulting got incorrect, which is a developing pattern during the week. Just take the youngster to school. That's all you need to do. Well, yeah. But obviously here, you know, with 15 minutes to go, the way teams have gone and the way this game has gone, you're looking at no more than maybe two offensive series for each team here in this quarter. And it's going to be a race to see who 
can create a turnover or who causes the turnover. It wouldn't be all right, Marcus, if you want to dial up one of those pick sixes that you uh, seem to be famous for. I'm glad. I'm okay with that at this point. Well, I, I, I'll call on uh, Dan Scott to call it this time. I mean, the most recent legitimate right before the pick six was called by Dan. And don't you forget it. <laughs> all right, here we go. We've switched into the field, second down and almost a full six for Mercer at their own 43, just shy of the 44 yard line. They'll go empty backfield again, now going left to right. Two receivers up top, three to the bottom. Ball on the far side hash. Leggett comes back to the backfield, fake the handoff to him, and for the first time, Riley keeps it, and he's got good running room to the short side, crosses midfield inside the Furman 45 to the 43 before Jonah Tibbs could bring him down. 14-yard yeah, gain. Yeah, that time Dylan Van got sucked in on the uh, on the read option. And Riley able to get outside of him. 21-21, just starting the fourth quarter. Riley, play action, dropping to throw, looking, wanted to go deep. Flags are down. He throws it high and incomplete over to the far sideline. He was looking deep down the middle of the field for Curtis, but he was well covered. And a holding penalty is going to back them up. Yeah, great job there by Dylan Van on that play because he's the one who created the hole, just continuous effort trying to get upfield and. Yeah, the right guard, Caleb Yates. Let's also give credit 95 Parker Stokes. That may be who they actually called the hold on, but they had two of them. After the penalty but just good job there by the, uh, the second team guys to get in there and make some plays. It was on, uh, on Caleb Yates, takes it back to the 47, first and 20. So you got him deep behind the chains here. Last time we had him in a situation like this, they were able to convert and ended up scoring a touchdown. Empty backfield and a quarterback draw. Flag again as Riley gets across midfield down near the 46. This looks like it might be another hold on Mercer. Jeremy says chop block. And they got Caleb Yates again, the same guy. Yeah, the, let's make sure we mark the penalty off from the right spot here. The other, the other good thing about it is the umpire gets clobbered and his old offensive lineman, that's always a good sign. Glad he didn't get hurt. Just want to let him feel something. Takes it back to their own 37, first and 30. This is obviously a situation now where we have got to force the punt. First and 30. They'll empty the backfield. Two receivers left, one right. Ball far side hash. Now they'll bring Leggett back into the backfield. They will hand it to him running straight ahead and he runs right into a purple wall. Got a yard and that's all. Chris Washington, the first Paladin defender there, giving a yard to the 38 and that's all. Yeah, just great talent, but also great technique there by Washington because he had the outside contained and just never let his guy move him off the spot. And once the gap closed, Washington there to make the play. Short on the play. Second down and 29. Mitchell to the left of the quarterback. Riley, three receivers here to the near side. That's the wide side. One up top, Riley to throw. And they throw the tunnel screen inside to Curtis, and we hit him and dropped him for a loss. Jalen Reed says, hello, number 13. Dropped him back at the 36-yard line for a loss of two. Yeah, just great recognition by Jalen Reed. That's your nose guard going out about 15 yards and making the play on a screen pass. He read that from the get-go because the Mercer offensive linemen were cutting right at the snap. And Jalen Reed there. Third down and 31. And this might be just to throw it up and see what happens. And if we intercept it, no harm, no foul. Reed to throw and throws over the middle, complete. That's Irvin running laterally across the 40, dives up to the 44. Over on the far sideline, Joe Farrar ran him down. 
And that's going to be obviously well short of the first down, and the Mercer punting unit will come on. Great job by our defense, and uh, the official just blatantly missed a chop block, high-low block downfield right about the point of the reception. Fortunately for us, Raynard Ellis able to get out of it, but uh, one of them had him low, the other one had him high, but our defense gets off the field. So fourth down and 18, Grant Goopel on to punt again, and back at his own 15 is Logan McCarter. High kick that won't turn over away from McCarter. Takes a firm and bounce and hit at the 25. Went out of bounds far side, and they're going to mark it, looks like, right at the 30-yard line. Yeah, when you think about it, Mercer had the ball first and 10 about the 43, and we're going to take over four plays later at the 30 following a punt. That's just an indication of how well our defense played those last three plays. Well, back-to-back -back holding penalties didn't hurt either. So, timeout on the field, 21 all, 11.48 to go in regulation. And Furman about to go on offense. We'll be back after this from Mass General Store on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Before the invention of the telephone and the internet, the general store was a vital link to the outside world. From coffee to cast iron and cradles to caskets, you could find it all. Today, the Mass General Store has all you need for life from your favorite brands, Columbia, Patagonia, Carhartt, King, the North Face, and more. A destination since 1883. Visit the Mass General Store in downtown Greenville or online at massgeneralstore.com. Put some extra cash in your wallet. Get a loan of $10,000 or more from Greenville Heritage Federal Credit Union before January 31st, and they'll give you 1% cash back up to $300. Plus, you'll save money when you refinance a higher interest rate loan or get a new car, motorcycle, boat, or RV loan at their great rates. Greenville Heritage Federal Credit Union, starting your year off right with cash back on a new loan. Visit GreenvilleHeritage.com or your nearest branch for more information. Federally insured by MCUA. Also have access to on-site care if you ever need it. Daylight is throwing just as better from here. Experience life at the Woodland today. 21-21 the score with 11.48 to go here in regulation. Dan Scott, David Cobb, Jeremy Arnett upstairs, Marcus McMorris downstairs. Marcus, we did not get the pick six, but a couple of holding penalties and some good defense later, we got it back. And I credit that to a, an extreme defensive effort and relentless effort to get to the ball. I mean, holding calls are, in my opinion, earned, and I think our defense did a good job on that, that uh, particular drive. Yeah, we created those holding penalties by just relentless effort. It started with Stokes and Van, first down play. And I'd like to see us stay aggressive here on offense. I hope we learned something on that last touchdown drive where we, we can make plays vertically downfield in the passing game, and let's see if we can uh, keep that alive here. You look at their defensive alignment as we start here. They've got all 11 players within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. We start in the double wing from our own 30 going right to left, and Blaze Jowski option, pitch it a little bit behind Moorhead, and that's going to limit him to a, just about a yard gain. Malik Fleming, the free safety, came up and stuffed him. Yeah, good job by Moorhead to pitch a little bit behind him. DeLuca whiffed on his block. So once Moorhead got the ball, not a lot of running room, but uh, just a good job of securing the football on that pitch. Second and nine, staying in the double wing. Blazer three-step drop, quick throw to the right, complete to Shumpert, and forces his way up to about the 38 before he's run out of bounds by Harrison Poole in front of the bench and a good job by Mercer. sorry about that Dan good job by Shepard of catching the football and turning up field and getting an extra yard or two making it third and about three versus third and four third and five third down and just a shade over two full yards Keelan Dirks in the game at the fullback in the double wing spot one receiver out to the left everything else tight Blaze Jowski Hands to Dirks, and he's got the first down. As he ran right, got across the 40, up near the 42. Had a couple of their defensive linemen jumping on the cadence. They didn't get into the neutral zone, but maybe created enough chaos to give Dirks the running lane. He got four yards and a first down. And Chris Breedlove in there at the right 
guard position there with a good block there on that third and short for the conversion. Back to the eye from the 42. Blazjowski rolling to his left. Backs out of the option look, throwing down the middle and a sliding grab. No, incomplete. We do have a flag in the backfield. That's going to be a hold on Furman. Blazjowski, the way he was rolling, couldn't quite get everything into the throw. And Ridge Gibson is going to be called for the hold. McCarter yep. really pleading his case like he caught the ball, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Yeah, Blaze Jasky, a little loaded option to our sideline. Going downfield, good play call, good aggressive play call. Let's see if we can battle back from first and 20. Back at the 32-yard line, 10-15. Remaining in regulation, 21-21 the score. Furman and Mercer here on homecoming 2017. Far side hash, Palin is going right to left. Dirks and Moorhead in the pistol behind Blaze Jowski. Comes up, says something to his line, says something to Dirks, and then hands it to Keelan, and Keelan will run into the pile and pick up a couple of yards, and that's all. So, give him two to the 34. Actually, just give him one to the 33. Second down and 19. Wilcox in the game now. Blazjowski dropping the throw out of the pistol, setting up the screen. Wilcox makes a catch, 35-40 and up to about the 43-yard line. Eric Jackson, the strong safety, belted him down there. And that'll get all of that penalty yardage back plus one. It'll be third down and nine. Yeah, I wish Wilcox would have waited just a little bit more. Give credit to Mercer's Huzai for making a, a push on the play, but a little bit more patience. I think he could have gotten outside. So let's see if we can convert on third down and nine. Blazowski takes a snap and drops. Looking, has time, now steps up, throws near sideline. Gordon makes the catch, and with the one step he was able to take forward, got just enough for the first down before Harrison Poole ran him out of bounds right here at the Furman bench. Wow, we didn't get the best spot. We're going to get the first down, but uh, we got that proverbial right foot spot when it should have been the left foot spot, but great job by Gordon of getting to the sticks. And Blaze Jasky with another fastball for the first down. Go back to the pistol with the two backs behind him. Option right, pitch, Moorhead has a seam, 40, 35, and down inside the 30 or right at the 30-yard line. Eric Jackson finally stopped him. And there's another nice run on the option, 17 yards for Darius Moorhead. A great job by Andy Shepard. Outside, he just kept riding his guy, riding his guy, riding his guy, and that's the block that Moorhead cut off of. But great job by 85 in the blocking game. Now at the Mercer 30-yard line, 8-10, 8-09. Clock running fourth quarter, game tied at 21. Back to the eye, play action. Blazjowski throwing near side, and it's caught by Gordon on a little comeback here at the near sideline. Good for nine yards to the 21 in front of Stephen Huza. And it'll be second down and one. That's about a 40, 45 yard throw from Blaze Jowski on the timing route to Gordon. Some situational substitutions for our offensive line. Krober back in in place of Breedlove at the guard position. What do you do here on second and one at the 21 yard line of Mercer? They go back to the pistol. Play action. Blazer has to step up through traffic. He's going to tuck it and run. Lowers his head. Gets across the 15 to about the 14. Will Conaway, the inside linebacker, there to stop him. But a good, quick decision made by Blaze Jowski and a first down after a gain of seven. Now, I like the aggressiveness on the play call because we we're going to go play action to Shumpert. Mercer had two guys covering him. That's what creates the space for Blaze Jowski when he steps up. There's nobody in the middle of the field, and Blaze Jowski gets what he can and gets down. Back in the red zone. Furman three for three today. Dirks the fullback. Hand it to the big fella, and he'll fall forward for a gain of a couple. Lee Bennett 
brought him down. Just good power running behind Walker. The tight end lined up at tackle and Bush lined up at left guard. And we're not churning out the huge rushing numbers that we've seen the last three or four weeks, but a lot of tough, tough yards right now. 165 total rushing yards for the Paladins. Hand off Dirks, big hole running right inside the 10 down to around the eight yard line. That'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Eric Jackson stopped him. Just good, tough downhill running. Give him the seven, it'll be third and three. Got to get to the four for a first down. Go under six minutes to go, back to the eye. Plays Jowski under center. Hand it to Dirks again, pushing, pushing, got right to the five, and it'll be fourth down and a yard. You know, these are where the decisions where the head coach makes his living, fourth and a yard at the five. No field goal is a chip shot, but obviously it's a, a, a sort of just an exaggerated extra point from where you are. Well, he sent it in the jumbo package, or as I like to like to reference the guy two booze down, Sam Weiss used to call this the Weebies, as in Weeby going to score. Fourth and one at the five, to the eye, everything tight. Wilcox and Gibson behind Blazjowski, hand off to Wilcox, second effort, and he should have the first down. You're exactly right, Wilcox there with the second effort. I think he was stymied really at the point of the first down but then he turned and he lays out across the uh, four yard. It looked like we needed to get to the four and he's inside the four. They, Mercer training staff was run out. They thought they had a had an injury. They don't, they're bringing on the chains. Marcus, what's the call? Uh, first down Paladins. Either that or we paint the field crooked. <laughs> There it is. Yep, got it by the length of the football. That's just man to man, helmet to helmet, body to body, and Wilcox using every bit of his 230 pounds. Furman is now four for four on fourth downs today. First and goal at the three, trying to take the lead. 5:02, 5:01 to go. Offset eye behind Blaze Jowski, everything tight. Blazer got some movement up front. Hand to Wilcox, running right, diving to the goal line, touchdown! Touchdown, Wilcox! Woo, that ball came out late. Paladins lead it. But I uh, give Wilcox credit, he crossed the goal line. Yeah, two of the officials are talking it over. But the official running in from the Far side signal touchdown. And touchdown it is. And Furman leads it 27 to 21 with 4.48 to go. Wilcox's third touchdown of the game. Yeah, let's credit the right side of that offensive line because we opened a huge hole in the short yardage situation, their goal line situation. Layton and Krober on the right side. And now Ankins to make it a seven-point lead. And he does with 4.48 to go. Timeout on the field. On homecoming 2017, the Paladins lead it 28-21. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hi, Furman fans. Dan Scott here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. 
Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. Furman scoring drive, 14 plays, 70 yards in exactly seven minutes. Antonio Wilcox, his third rushing touchdown of the game, gives him nine on the year. And it's 28-21 with 4.48 to go. Powellin's on top. And, you know, we talked about this a little earlier, figuring that as we hit this point of the schedule, the, the competition is going to start getting better and better. The only way to learn to win close games, guys, is to win one. And we've been in a battle all afternoon, and uh, you know, we uh, give us credit. We we got down seven, we go up seven, we get down seven again. Now we're back up seven, and we need our defense to make a play. And uh, a couple buddies of mine watching this on TV said we got the call of the century. Said looking at it on the TV replay, we might have Wilcox might have been short before the fumble, but uh, as one of them said by text, given who makes these calls, I'm not complaining and I'll take it. <laughs> so let's have a one play from our defense and let's get this thing wrapped up. Here is Hollingsworth. High kick will drive Curtis back. He'll just watch it sell over his head. Bounce nine yards deep and go through the back of the end zone. So Mercer will have it first and 10 at its own 25 yard line. You know, and just the battle up front today, our offensive line against the Mercer defensive front, uh, when you're four for four on fourth downs, when you run the ball as many times as we've run the ball today, just good battles up front. And Are you surprised that we have been so determined to run, especially running out of the eye, and we've not seen all of the misdirection and everything that we've become so accustomed to here? through the first seven games. We're going to get a break here because they had 12 guys in the backfield, so we're going to get five yards. But, yes, you know, especially because our passing game today has been effective. Blaze Jowski, 16 of 19. So it's it's not a situation where we've not been able to throw the football, but we've been determined. Um, After the penalty, ball is at the 20-yard line, first and 15. Yeah, we've had success running the football. It's just been a very methodical, very – uh, grinded out kind of offensive approach today. First and 15 back at the 20. Gonna bring Mitchell off the slot into the backfield, fake the pitch to him. Riley keeps it and he'll get the five yard penalty back, falling ahead to the 25. Jonah Tibbs brought him down. Yeah, a little quarterback draw out of that spread formation, trying to get the yardage back and obviously Mercer in four down territory, I would think getting close to four minutes left in the game and just trying not to put the freshman quarterback on too large of an island. But he's responded well today. He's, he's made some big throws and made some big plays. Actually gave him four to the 24, second down and 11. And flags again stop the play just as the ball is snapped, and this is going to be motion. And that will take him back to the 19-yard line. And now this crowd, homecoming crowd here is – Really starting to get into it. Yeah, if you're listening, get on your feet and cheer, baby. We need some help here. We need some noise. Furman up 28-21 with 4.14 to go. Looking for its fifth consecutive win. And a win that would put it at 4-1 and one in the SOCON. They'll empty the backfield on second down and 16. Two receivers to the left, three to the right. That's the wide side. Riley takes the snap, has time, looking, throws underneath, complete to Curtis. Ooh. Oh, and he has just hit hard by Elijah McCoy at the 32-yard line. Or excuse me, not the 32, the 27. He'll get eight yards, but, boy, did he take a shot. That's a tackle any middle linebacker would be proud of because he squared him up and uh, – put the helmet right between the numbers. Third down and eight. Boy, you get a stop here. 322, 321 clock running. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's motion. They're going to call that on us, I think, but that's motion. That's awful. The umpire cannot call that. The umpire cannot call us being in the neutral zone, drawing a guy off sides because he cannot see that. And you got the linesman who's looking right at it, and he doesn't call it. Oh, and now they've changed it and called it a false start on Mercer. Yeah, that umpire came in wanting to call us for being in the neutral zone and drawing them all sides, and fortunately he got talked out of it. Yeah, Drew Seabrook was the one who jumped, but it was so far ahead of the snap. Mercer now in this quarter, five penalties for 45 yards. They have all been huge. Third down and 13. Furman in the 4-7 defense. Riley to throw over the middle. Catch by Irvin, and we just swallow him up, move him back. He got a yard, and that's all. Joe Farrar read it beautifully as he came dragging across toward the near sideline, and that's going to force a punt with 2.32 and the clock running. That's a little surprise. Bobby doesn't call timeout here. I know he's got all three timeouts, but he's going to – probably wind up losing about 15 or 20 additional seconds here by just getting his punt team on. But you got to, I think you've got to punt here at fourth and 12. 212, 211, clock continuing to run. Goople to kick. No rush by the Paladins. Kick again, won't turn over. McCarter comes rushing up to make the fair catch at the 44 yard line with 202 to go in the game. Well, our defense did its job to win this football game, and now it's up to this offense with Mercer with three timeouts. You get one first down, and the ball game is over. Well, let's let's keep it here. They're taking immediate timeout. We are all caught up on our break, so let's bring Marcus in, and, and let's talk about this. You, you don't want to put the cart before the horse, especially with what we saw at the end of the first half when we dodged a, a, a bullet by giving up a big play and, and having them miss a field goal. But we, if we're able to take care of business in this final 202, after four straight blowout wins, this team is going to have to learn to win some close games, guys. And and right now, we're 202 away from doing that. Definitely. And uh, Mercer having three timeouts, uh, we're going to have to get a first down here. And uh, that's what it takes. And I mean, we could put it on the defense. But I, I'd like to see us get uh, a first down and seal the deal. You know, and do you have the guts here on first down to do a little play action and go deep? Because you know Mercer's going to sell out for the run. I'd love to see it, but. You know, we need to keep that. Well, I'll give up the 57-yard touchdown streak because it would only be 56 yards. But uh, well, So then it would be six straight games with at least 56 if we hit one. But, uh, you know. You know they're going to be selling out for the run. But, again, going back to our defense, our defense did a great job there. The second down play, the third down play, Farrar just battling through it. And we had guys, what Mercer did against our 3-8 our alignment was throw it short, and they were going to run a sort of a, a blocking scheme where you're going to run around and try to just pick people off like you do a punt return. And our guys just fought through the wall and uh, just great battle there. Total yards, Mercer 376 to Furman's 335. Here it goes. Now the Paladins coming out. Wilcox, Ridge Gibson, Avery Armstrong also in there. They'll go double wing, everything tight. 2.02 to go, Furman with the ball. Up 28-21, Mercer has all three of its timeouts. And everything tight. Blaze Jowski under center at the 44-yard line. Hand it to Wilcox, and he is hit after a gain of a yard to the 45 by Lee Bennett, and they immediately call the first of those three timeouts. You know, I, I'm with you. I, I know that conventional football wisdom says don't do it but especially the way they sold out for the run right there. Can you imagine if you were to play fake and then throw over the top right here? And you've got a senior quarterback who's got poise, and, you know, you just sit there and tell him if it's not wide open, just get what you can, get upfield and get down and make them use the timeout. But, uh, 
You know, everybody on that formation was one of those old-timey 1940s style offense and defense because everybody was in the, within the picture frame and they were all tight within eight yards of the football. And, uh, you know, if we if we do that two more times, all we're going to do is punt it back to Mercer and give them a fresh set of downs with about a minute yeah. and 40 seconds. So, well, I don't uh, know if, if you guys noticed too, but Will Conaway, their uh, inside linebacker, um, actually went down to a knee and then got up and limped off the field. So I don't know if he does not look like he's in their little sugar huddle on defense. That play took three seconds, by the way. 1.59 to go. Same clock operator that was doing the Tennessee-South Carolina game last <laughs> week, right? <laughs> now they spread it out. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, go to the pistol. And a handoff to Dirks, and Keelan will get across the 45 to about the 47. Dorian Kithcart, the nose tackle, stopped him, and now you're going to be faced with a, about a third down and seven after the timeout with a minute 55 to go. Yeah, so far we've burned six seconds with those two offensive plays. And, you know, again, the good news is that if we get a first down, the game's over. We just got to convert here and get this first down. I'm bring Marcus back in. Let's discuss this. You guys played the game. This is a more of an obvious passing down. Do you do you throw it? Do you go option? What do you do here? I, I think what we're going to see from this from Furman on this uh, down will be a uh, delayed draw. Um, I think they have confidence in their confidence in their defense right now, and I don't think. I don't think they're concerned with actually getting this first down. I think it would be a great thing to do, but I don't think they're actually really that concerned with getting it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing whatever we do, put it on the edge, either Blaze Jowski on a sort of a run pass option going to his right where we know he can throw the ball, and if it's not there, just have him tuck it up. But All right, to the eye, Moorhead the deep back, and just as they start the play, Furman calls a timeout. Yeah, we were going to come back and run the lead option to the short side of the field, and I think Clay Hendricks didn't like the uh, the numbers, so uh, didn't like the call versus the alignment. So they'll they should put one second back on the clock, and, it's, and they do. It was at 154. They put it back to 155. Powell, it's that far away from a. The umpire's spotting the, the umpire's spotting the ball at the wrong place. He's putting it on the 39. The line of scrimmage is actually, I mean, the 44. The line of scrimmage is the 47. Somebody's got to, somebody's got to correct that. He's, he's making it third and 10 versus third and seven. How do they do this? He's got it spotted the wrong place. Now they got it. That's ridiculous. Those things on the sideline with a number mean something. <laughs> Yard line. All right, here we go. Third down and seven. Pistol. Two backs behind. Dirks and Moorhead. Hand it to Dirks. Falls across midfield to the 48-yard line for a gain of five, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Mercer will call its final timeout. Actually, marked him back at the 49, so a gain of four. Yeah, again, you'd love to have had Blaze Jowski keep that. That was a very quick option out of the divide backfield, and if he would have pulled it and run to the corner, I think we had something. Let's go back to the scoreboard here in a minute. I would imagine, too, if we've got a little play in the punt game to try to draw people off sides, uh, obviously this is the time to run it because, again, if we get a first down, that's the ball game. But we've just set up one of these Alcoa fantastic finishes, haven't we? Oh, there's a throwback. A big-time throwback. All right, after the timeout. You know, all the students who left, they've missed a pretty good uh, 
second half of football. Curtis standing at his 10-yard line. Hollingsworth to punt it away. Mercer with 10 men on the line of scrimmage. We'll see if they come after him this time. And they're bringing some pressure, but he gets it out of there. End over in kick. Curtis lets it hop. It goes out of bounds, far side or near side on the fly. Now let's see where they mark this thing. Well, I think we caught a break on that because it looked yeah. like he just kind of half halfway swung at that one, and they marked it at the 15. It looked like maybe the 20, 25 was where that thing went out of bounds. So they're 85 yards away, and they need a touchdown to tie it. Paladins have put the game in the hands of their defense. And if you're in the stadium, get on your feet. Let's make some noise. They'll go two receivers each side, near side hash. Riley takes the snap, looking right, throwing, and it's complete up at the 30-yard line. Catch was made by Irvin, and then OK nailed him, number eight. Putting the hit on number eight, gain of 15. And they're going to call him out, so call him out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock after the chains move. 138 to go. Riley rolling to his left, steps up through traffic, hits his safety valve out of the backfield. That is Mitchell, and he's dragged down inbounds as he crossed the 35 to the 36-yard line, Farrar and McCoy. Run clock run, good job of keeping him inbounds. 120, 119. Second down and four. Snap, Riley looking, throwing down the far side, complete into Furman territory across midfield and out of bounds at the 47-yard line to Avery Ward. Yeah, he just split the zone coverage and again out of bounds. Looks like one of our defensive guys is down on the ground here too. Let's see if we can get some help. From, yep. It's Brian, That's, okay. Looks like he might be cramping up. Clock is stopped with a minute 10. We've let them go about, what, 50 yards, 40 yards? Started at the 15. Yeah, 42, 43 yards. 38. So while they tend to Brian, okay, it'll give the defense a chance to kind of recollect itself a bit. And this is the the kind of nether world you find yourself in as a defensive coordinator. The conventional wisdom again says you play prevent here and you let him catch the ball in front of you and take time off the clock. You don't want to get overly aggressive and have somebody beat you along one on one down the field. Yeah, we need one sack. We need one. Obviously, a, a turnover would be phenomenal. So if y'all could order one of those, that'd be great. But you just need one sack, one turnover, something. Devonta Porter in replacing OK. Meanwhile, up in Spartanburg, typical Saturday afternoon for Wofford. They and Samford tied at 21. Six minutes to go, fourth quarter. All right, Mercer has it at the Furman 47. First and 10. Paladin's up 28-21, a minute 10 to go. Riley takes the snap, looking, pressure coming, rolls out to his right, turns and just flings it the other way. Out of bounds over on the far sideline. Great pressure by Jalen Reed, and you know, that's not gonna be grounding because there's somebody, 87 for Mercer, Sam Walker just happened to be in the neighborhood, but that is as intentional a grounding as you will ever have in football because he just turned and threw, and he was still in the box, but great pressure by Jalen Reed. 104 to go, second and 10. But Walker was 15 yards behind that ball. Snap, steps up, throws over the middle. It is complete to Curtis inside the 45. Down to the 42, Jordan Willis stops him. Gain of five, third down and five. 50 seconds, 49, 48. They hustle to the line of scrimmage. Riley calls for the ball, gets it, rolling to his right. Looks right, nothing there. Still rolling, still rolling. Throwing to the sideline, incomplete. Just had to throw it away with 38 seconds to go. And it's fourth down coming up. Great job, our guys in coverage. Farrar, McCoy, Lemmings. 
Everybody, great job in coverage because we only rushed three. Ball game play. This could be the ball game right here. Fourth and five for Mercer with 38 seconds to go. Paladins get a stop. They'll have their fifth consecutive win. Two receivers each side. Riley takes the snap, bobbled it, picked it up, pressure coming. Rolling to his right, throwing underneath, and it is complete. Inside the 30 at the 29 to Curtis, who made a tough catch in traffic. Oh, just good throw and catch. Give him credit. We were there. 13 yards, winding the clock, 26, 25. Riley rolling to his right. Rolling, still rolling. Now he's going to tuck it up and run and get out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. He'll gain three yards, 19 seconds to go. And don't be afraid to call a hold. Is that, we got another kid down who's cramping up. Is that Jalen Reed again? But He's had some shoulder issues this afternoon, but uh, don't be afraid to call a hold there on that scramble. I hate not having big number 75 on the field. Second and 10, 19 seconds to go, second and seven rather, 19 seconds to go. They got to get into the end zone. 28-21 Paladins. Snap to Riley, looking left, throwing into the seam, and it's complete. No, incomplete. Wow. Could not hold it at the six-yard line. A great, great job there, converging late. That was okay. I think, no, that was Akilah Noor Ooh. who came in late. And that's exactly right, Dan Reed, Dan Scott. Sam Walker. Ooh. We might have gotten away with a target, too, because he came helmet first. But just a great job of knocking that thing away. Third and about, almost eight, 12 seconds to go. Obviously, two plays left on the clock. They have no timeouts. 12 seconds remaining. Snap. Riley looking, pressure coming. We hit him, he lets it go toward the end zone and it's intercepted. Joe Farrar picks it out of the air in the end zone with three seconds to go. Touchback and the Paladins are gonna win it. And Alex Hamp got to get credit for the interception as well because Hamp beat his guy one-on-one. -on -one. He hit Riley and forced the throw, but bend, 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 but don't break, and let's go celebrate another Paladin win. Great job, guys. Celebration on the sidelines going on. They've got to get everything together. I think Furman has called a timeout to do just that. Chad's Actually, they haven't. They've got to run one play. Credit Chad Staggs. He came out in this, this second half, and he won the football game. There's... What a great hug, Chad Staggs, Clay Hendricks on the sideline, Brian Bratton, but oh, what a freaking great job our defense. Blazjowski takes the knee, and that is the ball game. A tough physical matchup between these two teams. Furman wins it 28-21 over Mercer. The Paladins have now won five in a row, and Mercer's three-game winning streak comes to an end and the celebration continues here on homecoming day 2017 for Clay Hendricks's club after four straight blowout wins they win a nail biter here at Paladin Stadium 28-21 the final just a walk in the park Dan right had them all the way right Woo, son stay tuned Pepsi Post Game Show is coming up next, and you're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Last year, lottery players took home more than $924 million, but they weren't the only winners. Since the lottery launched in 2002, more than 1.4 million scholarships have been awarded to South Carolina students, huh? and millions have gone to support K-12 and community education programs. So when you play the South Carolina Education Lottery, you're not just taking a chance, you're also giving one. For more information, visit sceducationlottery.com.